Hello, everybody uh, here in the audience and uh, especially you watching online. Uh, welcome to the DigiPlace regional workshop here in Tallinn. Uh, my name is Jan Saar. I'm the head of digital construction at the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communications here in Estonia. I'm also a member of the uh, advisory board for the DigiPlace project. And uh, welcome. Today is the first day the start of a new school year in Estonia and in many countries around the world, 1st of September, and uh, what better day to pick uh, to learn more about uh, what is happening in digital construction and about an exciting project which is called DigiPlace. If you don't yet know about it, then uh, we will give you a really good overview today. But first, before uh, we dive into uh, DigiPlace projects, uh, I would like to uh, uh, point out that we are also organizing this uh, in collaboration with uh, WDBE, which is the World Summit for Digital Built Environment, which is a uh, conference, a virtual conference, that's going to take place on the 29th and 30th of September. And it is a really exciting event. Um, DigiPlace is not directly related to WDBE, but uh, we are organizing this uh, regional workshop 
as kind of a pre-event. Uh, and since the topics are pretty much uh, the same, or they overlap, then it's, um, I think, uh, good to point out that uh, did you, uh, how WDBE is uh, also related to this project. And um, if we can have uh, the next slides, I think we have a few more slides about uh, just uh, to show about WDBE. Um, it's a global conference, and it's going to be organized uh, fully online. It's um, basically an illusion city of between Helsinki and Tallinn. And next slide, please. Uh, and we're happy to announce that actually today a press release went out that uh, we are partnering with Epic Games, and we're using the Unreal Engine to create uh, a first-in-the-world experience uh, when it comes to a business conference. So um, check it out at uh, wdbe.org. Here are some of the keynote uh, speakers that will be presenting uh, virtually in a virtual environment. Um, so that's, that's really cool. So uh, now that we have that out of the way, uh, we can uh, go, go on with the DigiPlace uh, regional workshop program here. Uh, that's taking place in Tallinn. We have a few people in the audience here. Uh, and we initially planned to do this um, as a fully on-site workshop uh, and to have the online uh, video feed as an addition. But since, you know, the situation uh, around the world uh, and in Europe is constantly changing, the new normality, we've kind of had to switch to going mostly digital with, uh, you know, local people having the opportunity to come here uh, to Swiss Hotel in Tallinn where this event is taking place right now. So, the agenda. So we have a very interesting day uh, prepared for you. And um, I will now like to hand over uh, the talk to uh, Ricardo Viaggi. He's from the Committee for European Construction Equipment and he's all the real reason why this uh, workshop is taking place. So I'm kind of filling in in place uh, for Ricardo, uh, but uh, I will let him introduce uh, DigiPlace, uh, the project himself. So Ricardo, are you online? Hello, good morning, everyone. I am online. I hope you can hear me correctly. Thank you very much, Jan, for uh, introducing me and for uh, allowing me to say a few words uh, here. Um, I am uh, indeed uh, very sorry not to be there with you uh, in Tallinn. Uh, I, uh, we're all struggling with uh, the current circumstances of, uh, of COVID uh, not allowing us to, to, to travel. But um, we would like to thank uh, all the participants uh, for being uh, in Tallinn, in presence uh, and also online. Uh, we are, uh, as uh, CECE, uh, is uh, in charge of uh, the dissemination and communication of uh, this European funded project, uh, a project funded by the European Union, of which you will hear everything uh, by Professor uh, Turk uh, in, in a minute. Uh, we are uh, very happy to see uh, many of you uh, either uh, physically or online. This is a, a responsibility uh, of ours to um, communicate about this project, uh, about uh, the action that we undertake. Uh, and uh, we are uh, indeed uh, thankful to the ministry, to Kira Hub uh, and to WDBE, um, as well as to um, uh, the Finnish Association of Civil Engineers for supporting uh, this uh, this event today. Uh, we uh, are uh, thankful uh, for uh, this regional workshop, which is a first uh, of, of other events that will take place uh, throughout the next month. Um, hopefully, uh, more and more uh, in physical presence, uh, but otherwise, uh, technology is. Uh, Will always help us uh, in uh, in this uh, in this endeavor. Uh, as uh, my responsibility is communication about the project, I also would like to point uh, to point you towards digiplaceproject.eu in one single word as the website uh, of uh, our project uh, where. Um, you can find all the information about the project, uh, the public, uh, the public uh, reports that we produce uh, as as a project, uh, and uh, the calendar of the next events, uh, which will also be uh, be uh, before your uh, for your interest possibly. Uh, indeed, we have other future meetings of dissemination uh, to which everyone uh, is invited, as uh, 
This is a, a project funded by the European Commission. Uh, we have a duty to, um, uh, to, uh, to communicate as widely as possible. And this is our goal of today. So I would like to thank uh, uh, the DigiPlace speakers that have agreed to be, uh, to be online uh, uh, with us this morning to present to you the project uh, where we stand uh, to also involve you in the communica community of stakeholders uh, and uh, also to involve you in the, in the inputs uh, that uh, this project uh, will, uh, will, will need. Uh, this uh, is uh, all I wanted to say and uh, I would like to conclude Introducing DigiPlace, an EU-wide collaboration of 19 partners from 11 countries representing the construction industry, academia and national governments united in a single mission to build the foundation for a digital collaborative future for the European construction industry. Europe's construction sector is unique and rich in history. It's given shape to our beautiful cultural heritage and provides millions of Europeans with a safe and extensive infrastructure and comfortable homes and workplaces. However, when it comes to digitalization, the construction sector has not reached its full potential yet. The sector's long and complex supply chain makes the implementation of innovation difficult. In spite of several promising national and European initiatives to boost digitalization, the complexities of the EU market have prevented cross-trade and cross-country synergies from taking place. That's where DigiPlace comes in. As the shared platform for innovation, collaboration and mutual learning, DigiPlace aims to provide a solid digital foundation that all European construction players can build upon. Our goal is to integrate digital construction technologies, applications and services, provide best practices and plan a roadmap for the future. What will digital construction look like? How can it energize your production and supply chain? How will it affect your work, market and consumers? A shift to digital can seem daunting. That's why we are building DigiPlace jointly, brick by brick. All across Europe, digitalization is driving the productivity of industries and services and construction cannot stay behind. Visit our website and get involved now. Let's build the digital future of the European construction industry together. So, thanks Ricardo for the introduction. I think that was a really good uh, video as well to show kind of a brief summary, a glimpse into what DigiPlace is. And uh, before we go on with our next presentation, um, Ricardo, do you have anything more you would like to uh, add to the, to the video? Because we had a well, slight abrupt. If you allow me just a, a last word, uh, last but certainly not least, uh, I would like to thank the local team uh, of, uh, of technicians and event manager uh, uh, led by AVE that are possible. That's all. Thanks, Ricardo. And um, we also have uh, an opportunity for all the viewers out there and, of course, the people in the audience to ask questions. Uh, we are using uh, Slido. Uh, to uh, where you can send in your questions and we can uh, we can take them during the uh, presentations so just go to slide.do so this is uh, uh, the website for Slido and search for DigiPlace and it will come up as an event and then you can just submit your questions uh, throughout the event so whenever you have a question uh, to any of the presenters uh, on our agenda uh, just send it through that app and we will try to answer them as best as we can. All right, so um, can we have the agenda slide uh, once more? Uh, so we can go quickly over, the, um, uh, over today's agenda. So we're, uh, we have two sections for today. Uh, on the first half, we're going to talk about uh, the project itself. Um, Professor Ziga Turk is going to present. Then we're going to give some local perspective of what we're doing in Estonia and Finland uh, and how it relates to DigiPlace, this project. And then uh, before lunch, we're going to look at the reference architecture framework. So that's uh, going to be done by, uh, by two presenters. Uh, then we're going to have a 45-minute lunch break um, here 
in, in Tallinn and hopefully you at wherever you are. Uh, and uh, then we'll go and look at the strategic roadmap after lunch and also about um, how, how you can be involved uh, with the DigiPlace project uh, itself uh, by being part of, uh, of the community. And of course, uh, questions and answers uh, section uh, and, and brainstorming, uh, which we will do uh, before closing remarks. Uh, so we should be done by 2.20 Estonian time, uh, 1.20 Central European time. And uh, yeah, that's the agenda for today. But now, uh, hopefully we have Professor Ziga Turk from University of Ljubljana uh, online. Um, Professor Turk, are you there? Yes, hello, good morning from Ljubljana, Slovenia. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry, uh, like Ricardo was, that uh, I was not able to travel to Tallinn. I was there about uh, maybe 10 years ago, and I was really looking forward to a possibility to visit again. Um, so without any further ado, um, would you just uh, bring up my first slide? And um, what I'd like to do is actually provide some motivation, provide some um, general idea of what the DigiPlace project is about. Some people know me already. Uh, I have been in the field of construction information technology for actually whole of my professional life, uh, last uh, 35 years or so, seen many things. And again, you know, what is happening today, what is happening with the platforms, again, it feels like this could be the single bullet, this could be the thing that could really push, that could really move uh, construction forward. The brief outline of the talk is that, well, actually the internet changed how we live. Uh, the actual game changers was not just the internet per se, but the platforms and intermediaries um, that have changed how we use IT in our private lives. And somehow we feel in the DigiPlace Consortium that the same approach, same paradigm could work in construction. There's a change of paradigm, it will be um, demanding. There are opportunities and threats that go with it. The opportunity is empowerment of everybody in the value chain. Uh, but the threats are also, you know, who will take control of this, um, who will be, who will reap the benefits. And strategically, there has been a decision by the European Union that the EU needs its own industrial platforms. And what the DigiPlace project is about is to charge the way towards a European industrial platform for construction. Next slide, please. Um, unfortunately, this should be the graphical outline of the talk, but somehow it did not render properly. Um, I'd like to start with a quote by Bill Gates. Um, some of us uh, hate him, some of us love him. Um, he made a couple of good decisions, he has a couple of good insights, and early uh, in this century, um, he said the following. He said, as we look ahead into the next century, leaders will be those who empower others. So the empowerment of others uh, was supposed to be the winning formula of information technology in this century. Next slide. And actually, it did happen, it did materialize. Maybe Microsoft was not the one that was actually practicing that, but the empowerment came through the um, revolutionary concept in the form of computing, which were platforms. And these platforms destroyed a lot of traditional industries. Nokia and Blackberries were destroyed by the platforms of iPhone and Android. Hotel business is being challenged by our Airbnb. Taxis are challenged by Uber. Software downloading um, has been challenged by app stores, Google, Google Play, and other services. Content delivery uh, is on the platforms such as Spotify, YouTube, Blogger, uh, and WordPress. Shops, retail shops, uh, are being destroyed uh, by um, Amazon, for example. And even banks have a platform-like replacement which is called Kickstart. There were there are some uh, elements of the industries where platforms were successful. Platforms have been successful in consumer industries where there has been a long tail of uh, consumers, but also a long tail of producers and creators in areas where things were information intensive. So um, yes, construction is such an area as well. We have gigabytes uh, in construction design. In areas where there have been non-scalable gatekeepers. So gatekeepers, managers of flow of business values that had limited, limit, limit, limited potential to handle things. 
and we do have that in construction as well. It was very successful in fragmented industry. It was very successful in industries with information asymmetries, where part of the actors knows a lot and part of the ex actors uh, know some, uh, does not know so much. So, in fact, construction checks all those boxes. So what we think is that, well, if stuff worked for lay people, if stuff worked for our private lives, maybe it could work for construction as well, because construction too is um, consisting of a lot of individual small and medium companies. Um, the overall architectures of the platform business, uh, next slide, looks something like um, you have the IT infrastructure in the bottom, um, it could be cloud, it could be internet, then you have some platform on top of that platform, providers, of products, providers of services, providers of content, set up something and the end users use whatever they are doing uh, through this particular platform. Next slide. So theoretically, platforms do two things. They reduce transaction costs between providers and suppliers. And probably even more importantly, they enable complementary innovation. They enable that innovations that take place on the platform by different actors, by different players, complement each other. And these actors and players also learn from each other. So this gives us three different types of platforms, transaction platforms where basically business gets done, innovation platforms where new stuff is being developed, and hybrid platforms which are the most successful, which combine the two. And this brings us to construction. Construction, we have all seen these charts, um, the growth of productivity, the growth of value added, the growth of um, hourly rates um, are, are almost non-existent. The orange line is construction, uh, the um, bluish line is um, industry, uh, manufacturing industry, and the average total economy somewhere in the middle. Not much uh, growth at a time where most of the industries were growing because of the introduction of IT. Next slide. But the situation is not actually uniform. Um, some parts of construction are actually doing quite well. Big housing. Uh, large construction, heavy construction. So whenever you have big construction project handled by big companies, things somehow work. Where construction is really bad and what drags the whole industry down is whenever small and media companies get involved, whenever trades get involved, whenever uh, kind of um, single family um, um, houses are being built, whenever you have these um, very, very um, split and very, very fragmented uh, types of, of players that uh, are involved. And this fragmentation, this fragmentation of a multitude of small players is very similar to the multi multitude of small private users of all those platform innovations that have been so successful in the, uh, in, the um, in, in our private, uh, private lives. Next slide. So platforms are bringing a paradigm shift. It's a different way of working, actually. And this different way of working actually means that we depart from a paradigm where we are using services and tools. Like we used to do 500 years ago, pen and paper, um, and of course later operating system, desktop PC, EasyMail Word, SAP, ETABS, Primavera, AutoCAD, Revit, Archicad. These were services and tools um, and the paradigm becomes different. The work is going from the platform, from the desktop onto a platform. We are seeing that already. COVID has been a great accelerator of all that. We get work done on Microsoft Teams. We get work done of, on Google Suite. We get work done on Slack. And increasingly work is being done in Autodesk 360, 360 in BIM Plus, um, in Open BIM, and so on and so forth. Next slide. So the paradigm is actually, um, the difference is actually that traditionally, actually for the last, since ever man started using tools, you would have a person in the center and that person would be using different tools. And on the right hand side, there's this difference, this new platform ecosystem where in the center there's a platform and what, whatever users there are, whatever actors there are, they get to the tools through the platform. And this is fundamentally, this is a fundamentally different way of working. There are a couple of opportunities there. Um, of course, delivery of technology. Imagine how 
advanced your technology that you use for your private life is in comparison to technology for your professional life. A lot of what we use privately is more advanced than what we use professionally because of this, because of this paradigm, because of platforms that delivers, uh, deliver us this technology. Um, they will improve uh, productivity, uh, interoperability and integrated work inside projects, but even more importantly, we will start reaping benefits of information and knowledge we use across projects because all these projects would be on a platform. Um, they enable new business models, um, intellectual property business models along the quote that the data is the new oil and they offer the opportunity in the long tail, in the customization, in the specialization. But where you have opportunities, you also have threats. And this threat is shift of control. Who controls the process? This shift of control can happen from owner, lead designer, lead contractor to the platform. Like it happened, for example, when it comes to news, from newspapers to Google or from television to YouTube. There will be changes in the value chain. There is a promise that IT in construction will give us 20% or more of efficiency gains. Whose gains will, be, will this be? Will it be the construction industry that will profit or some other players? There will be a fight for that. And also, not unlikely, is a great extinction, a great extinction. Platforms destroyed a lot of traditional uh, businesses like shops, like taxis, like media, it may, they may destroy something in the architecture, engineering and construction. And the actual problem is that a lot of the software that is out there, a lot of the software that European construction industry is using are American, uh, um, um, is American software and American platform. So there is a need for a European strategy, which brings me to my third point in this presentation. Europe is not very well present in this new economy. These are the, some of the most valuable platform companies. You see a big chunk present there in the US. You see a sizable chunk present there in China and in East Asia. And then you have Europe almost as irrelevant as, as Africa. And European Commission has this strategy that this is supposed to change, to change. The headline under which this is supposed to be changing is Industry 4.0, which is on the next slide. Um, initiative that is about 10 years old, that could, that should through digitalization, uh, ensure that European uh, construction and European industries will be able to compete um, globally. This. Um, has support from the highest levels. On the next slide, I have a picture and a quote from uh, Jerti Katainen, currently Vice President of the European Commission. He said, Europe's next unicorn, so Europe's next um, big successful uh, company could stem for, from collaborative, from platform economy. And also Max Lenke from the European Commission said, business to business platforms, this is the race that Europe cannot afford to lose. So the thinking in Brussels is, well, Europe, we cannot really compete with Google and YouTube and Facebook and all these consumer platforms, but we have industry still here, we have manufacturing still here. We could create platforms um, that would make sure that these, that these industries remain globally competitive and hopefully we even create platforms where, that will be a global equivalent of the Googles, of the Facebooks, of all the others, of, of Uber, but for the industries, including the construction industry. And this is where DigiPlace project um, comes in. Um, next slide. DigiPlace project is a Horizon 2020 project um, under the work for program of information and communication technologies under the heading of digitizing and transforming European industry and services through digital innovation hubs and platforms. Um, under the topic of digital platforms, um, DigiPlace kind of won the competition of who will be thinking about what the construction platform for the European industry would look like. The expected in impacts of the G DigiPlace project are um, numerous, of course, number one, increased productivity on one hand and also system sustainability of the European construction industry um, to facilitate the diffusion of a common language in construction. Um, 
BIM, Open BIM, Building Smart under these keywords and probably more. Pave the way for the growth of smart cities and smart infrastructures, much in the sense of Industry 4.0, where these um, smart things is connected to each other. Strengthening the role of the EU in the global construction ecosystem. So this ambition that if industrial platforms are being built, maybe we could be globally competitive when delivering these platforms. Accelerated and efficient collaboration between public authorities and industry. Validation in use the context of usability, risk and security assessment. Uh, maintaining an extended and eco, uh, an active ecosystem of relevant uh, stakeholders, uh, including SMEs, promotion of the diffusion of knowledge and the facilitation of introduction of digital practices, tangible contribution for European uh, key players to actively engage with the platforms in the business process, efficient information sharing across the program stakeholders, and last but not least, uh, facilitate the introduction of digital transformation in the European construction sector. Um, if we look at the map um, and the logos of where the partners from DigiPlace are coming from, as I have said, I have been in the construction IT research for quite some, quite some time. And here actually you see most of the centers of information technology research in construction that have been active over the uh, over over the past two decades or so, you probably uh, recognize uh, quite a few of the uh, logos. Um, indeed, maybe the Central Europe is not so well represented, but there are there is more than just the partners of the Digi DigiPlace project. DigiPlace is an open project. You could call that DigiPlace is a kind of a platform of a project where it tries to integrate, it tries to bring together not just the partners, which are many, which are 27 or something like that. Um, it brings in also the linked third parties. It brings all members of the uh, advisory board, which are 27, and it brings together a community of stakeholders. And I would like to warmly welcome you uh, into this community. Um, as far as the advisory board members is concerned, I think anyone, anything that is um, of, of, um, of, of, of note, uh, of prominence in European um, digital construction is present here, including general consultants like McKinsey, uh, which tells you that these general consultants have discovered that construction could be the next big opportunity for them to, well, expand their business. So from um, household name like that to uh, all the prominent software um, players and software providers, uh, software industry, both European uh, and American. The structure of the DigiPlace project is as following seven work packages. Um, work package one is project management, so perhaps not so very interesting uh, for you. Uh, work package seven, communication and dissemination, so this is what we are actually doing uh, right now. Uh, but then the core work package is number two, long-term community building. So the idea is create this innovation platform that will outgrow, that will last longer that will sustain life after the end of the project. Work package three, we started with the work on the digital um, barometer. So finding out where, how developed digitally are different companies in Europe, different countries in Europe. Work package four, what is holding them back? Where are the barriers and gaps? And we suspected that from the beginning and it is showing now through the research um, platforms seem to be the answer, the solution, um, and that will overcome many of the gaps and barriers which are being identified. Probably the core work is to define a reference framework architecture of this platform. So of what parts, of what pieces, how should these platforms look like? DigiPlace will not develop this platform, but it will bring together probably basically an agenda. What should happen in the next framework, in the next projects, in industrial development, 
so that we will get to this platform and it will create some boundary conditions, some requirements, how this platform should look like so that they will fulfill uh, the, the requirements um, set up in uh, previous work packages. And finally, strategy roadmap. So how do we get from not having a platform to having globally leading platforms and also local platforms in the European construction uh, industry? The highest level objective on the next slide, the highest level objective of the Digi 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 DigiPlace project is to create a reference architecture framework. It's called RAF. There will be presentation on that, of presentations on that um, in the remaining um, of this of this uh, conference. So reference architecture framework for the digital industrial platform for the construction sector based on shared consensus along the entire chain. So these platforms, the idea is they have to um, bring everybody in. And this is what this project is trying to do. Find the needs, the desires, the scenarios um, from companies big and small from west to the east uh, of Europe. I have been um, inviting you warmly, and I'm repeating that, uh, to the community of stake stakeholders. This is the QR code, scan it with your phone and get involved. We are looking forward to comments, contributions, suggestions, criticism. Um, we, as I started with Bill Gates, um, DigiPlace can empower you to bring your ideas to the table and make sure that your ideas are heard uh, over the um, over the course of development of these platforms. So to conclude and to give some way forward, um, the platform model is coming. It has been very successful in end user activities. It will Im improve efficiency, no doubt about that. It will improve productivity, but who will reap the rewards? We cannot, you know, just push out and squeeze out competition from Europe uh, through the legislative actions of the European Commission and through some kind of not quite competitive behavior. We need industrial strategy um, that will make sure that innovation happens in Europe, that platforms are developed in Europe, that European construction industry is globally more competitive because of that. Hopefully, even the software, European construction software industry, is um, able to contribute something to the global market. Um, and DigiPlace project is charting the way forward uh, into this direction. So with this, I would conclude this presentation. And if there are any questions, um, I have, I see one question in the, in the Slido, which is what is the cost of the DigiPlace project? Probably the, you mean the funding. I think the funding is, if I remember correctly, order of magnitude of 1 million euros spread over many, many partners. I think this is one of the project projects where the European Commission is getting the best value for money because the quality of the reports, the amount of reporting, the studies that the partners are doing, I can tell you this also for the University of Ljubljana, I think we are doing probably three times as much as we are being paid for uh, because um, it is so interesting because it's so great to be able to project some of the ideas and some of the thoughts um, about um, and, and chart the, the way of the, of the future of construction. Thank you, Professor Turk. Um, are um, there any questions from the uh, audience here uh, in the room? Don't be shy. I know it's a most Estonian audience, so they need a little time to warm up. <laughs> but uh, I think the presentation was very clear. Thank you, Professor Turk. And um, yeah, if we have uh, later on uh, in the session some questions, uh, we have the questions and answers section, then uh, maybe you can also join us uh, there or be. Online. There is another question on, on Slido, which is not okay. entirely clear to me. It says, whom do you expect as partners the most? Um, I don't know, maybe in the community of stakeholders. Um, actually, everyone. We need everybody, the entire value chain, 
but if you are a software company you might be even more how should i say commercially interested because if you are a software company if you are um, a, a company that works in in intellectual property in digital infrastructure platforms will be where you will be um, that will empower you where you will be making business in the future okay thank you do we have any more questions on slido no okay i think then we can uh, move on with our agenda so uh, next up is um well it's me <laughs> it's uh, um, a local uh, local pr perspective okay i see we have um, another slide uh, but this is not actually the current presentation slide uh, i'll give them a few seconds to sort the technical aspects out so yeah it will be uh, me and uh, also uh, Tony Lufti from uh, from Finland, who will be talking about platform of trust. But I will be focusing on on what we are doing here in Estonia, so uh, and what the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communications is uh, is doing in relation actually to this project. So if we can uh, start uh, with the first slide of the presentation, I'd be happy to introduce uh, the e-construction platform. So, Professor Turk already explained uh, or gave the, an overview of, of what the industry is facing. And if we switch to the next slide, um, just a brief intro about Estonia for those of you watching uh, uh, who don't know that much about Estonia. Well, the present company here not included, you probably know. Uh, Estonia has been called the most uh, digital society in the world. 99% um, of our state services are on online. We use digital signatures every day. Every Estonian citizen has an electronic identity. And this means, you know, hassle-free uh, taxation. Uh, you can start a company in minutes and so forth and so forth. You can actually be an e-resident as well. And regarding the built environment, we also have uh, a fully digital building permit process. Uh, we have what is called the building registry, which is the dig digital database uh, of the built environment. And um, yeah, the system is used throughout Estonia and uh, in all building permits uh, of houses go through this one system. And as I said, it's a fully digital process, but it's kind of, you know, uh, maybe not the perfect digital process because it is relying a lot on uh, on PDFs, drawings, and you know digital paper. So, where is the problem? And as already Professor, Professor Turk outlined, the productivity of the industry is very low, and this is even uh, <coughs> even worse in Estonia, where we are below the EU average. And uh, well, the reasons for that have been explained uh, in detail. If we can go to the next slide, please. Um, one of the reasons, of course, is the lack of digitization. And this is another graph to really show you know, where construction is. It's always at the bottom or the shortest bar. And the shortest bar here it does not mean good. <laughs> it's not a positive thing. So, um, and, the, and the fragmentation was already mentioned as well uh, by Professor Turk. Uh, and I completely agree with that. I mean, it's a huge industry. It's, uh, you know, billions and billions of euros. And in Estonia, it's, it's um, more than 10% of the GDP. So, but a lot of it is comprised of small companies, uh, SMEs, and this drives complexity. You have, you know, construction projects that are long. They involve a huge amount of different parties stakeholders you have designers engineers contractors subcontractors subcontractors of subcontractors and so forth and somewhere in between is the client somewhere at the end is the user the maintenance guys uh, and so forth so it's a very complex thing in Estonia what the Ministry of Economic Affairs uh, who is responsible uh, for the uh, kind of uh, legal framework around construction and we are also managing the building registry. Uh, and this means we are managing uh, the IT system uh, for the building permit process. Uh, 
our goal at Ministry is to increase productivity of the construction sector in Estonia three times by 2030. So it sounds ambitious, but as we are below the EU average, uh, we're kind of catching up at first. But once we get things going, I think we can, uh, we can go way beyond that. And if you think about the role of government, traditionally it's uh, relate, related to legislation, uh, process improvement, education, uh, kind of these um, uh, often long-term uh, methods of how to influence a whole sector. Uh, the most direct being, of course, uh, legal documents, but the process of you know, issuing uh, relevant legislation is very long and cumbersome even in Estonia uh, as an e-government because it requires the whole you know public to be aware and to uh, to have a say in whatever is changed in legislation but when it comes to Estonia the the good example uh, we have is that there is also kind of a fourth uh, main block that we can use to influence our, our tool and our arsenal and it is to create an environment for secure and reliable data exchange and for construction, this is what we're calling the e-construction platform. And the idea of the platform is to enable lossless exchange of standardized and trustworthy data between all of these different stakeholders that uh, I mentioned before. And Estonia already has, you know, uh, e-government uh, systems in place. But with this uh, e-construction platform, we're focusing on the built environment. So again, maybe the least uh, digitized uh, process uh, in the government system uh, when you look at it from a holistic perspective. So the goal of this platform would be to connect built environment data and services. Uh, of course we want to make BIM, building information modeling, uh, business as usual because a lot of players, especially in the design part of the uh, construction life cycle uh, are already extensively taking advantage of uh, information models and this is not only about you know uh, the nice 3d and visuals it's about actually the data that goes in there and we want to harness that data in government systems and to open up whatever we have uh, uh, related to public processes and to make them more efficient and transparent but the most exciting opportunity is, uh, as well as I think is with DigiPlace itself, uh, as it provides a framework for, uh, for platforms, is that we really open up the market for new products and services. And on one hand, our job at the ministry is to you know, open up public services, create APIs to make them accessible. Uh, but this is all to enable you know, the industry players who are actually creating the value uh, to take advantage of whatever uh, government data we have, public data we have, uh, and to combine it with their services. So essentially it's an integration platform uh, and uh, it doesn't have uh, a centralized or master database. So this is the kind of essence of how the e-government infrastructure in Estonia is working. So we're leveraging you know, the existing systems, what is called XROAD. Uh, we want to create an open platform uh, with APIs. And uh, an integral part of it is also the digital twin. But if we go to the next slide, <coughs> so for, for, uh, for speeding up uh, my presentation, I've skipped a few animations. So uh, uh, can we go back to the last one? Uh, what you see here is kind of a represent representation of a, of a classical breakdown of you have database, uh, services, and the user interface on top. So the services, uh, it's tough to see from this slide right now, uh, but uh, behind the e-construction platform, there are several different services. And there's uh, building registry services, there's uh, utility network services, uh, digital twin, other public sector services. And we are building the e-construction platform uh, using a microservice architecture. So each service itself is uh, mostly independent, communicating via APIs with several databases uh, which are distributed in different systems. But the idea is that you can communicate and you can connect data between them. 
And what this means is that the platform itself is mostly a, a set of agreements. So it's not some uh, huge information system, but the most important part of it is that we have a common language, common architecture, and common philosophy, which is to enable data sharing between different systems. Uh, to break away from you know these uh, siloed way of thinking, uh, project-based thinking, and to enable you know access to data, regardless of where it is actually. But this means the data exchange formats, the data uh, templates, as you will, have to be well standardized and adopted by the sector. Okay, now we can move to the next slide. Um, a few projects uh, that are related. To with the, the e construction platform. The e construction platform is kind of an umbrella for several ongoing projects we have at the ministry. So I could spend a whole day to, to talk about them, but I'm not because this is uh, not the main topic uh, for today's workshop. Uh, the main topic today is DigiPlace. And, uh, but some of these projects and the e construction platform itself that we are developing in Estonia has very strong links to DigiPlace. Uh, regarding the digital twin, we are building up a visual, uh, but also a semantic digital twin of the entire Estonia. We started with a prototype uh, already uh, one year ago, two years ago, and uh, by the middle of next year, we hope to have uh, all of Estonia uh, on LOD2 level, so that's level of detail. Uh, to kind of you know have the basics, the infrastructure for digital twins in place. Of course, digital twins means a lot more than just uh, again a model. But what we're really focusing on is that we have a dynamic model. So there's a process, an automated process behind the digital twin for updating and renewing data. So it should not ever remain static. It's constantly changing. And in the future, we hope to connect, you know, uh, real-time data, IoT. But this, again, sh probably is not something that the government should do, but we should enable access to the kind of infrastructure of digital twin, and so you can connect your services, your data, to uh, all of the public, public data, because there's a lot of public data out there. Uh, we just need to bring it all together. So next slide. Uh, another project we're working on is BIM-based permit checks. Uh, so at as I said, we have a fully digital permit process, but it's cumbersome. It's, um, the data we get from there is not machine readable. It's often manual. Uh, we hope to change that by utilizing uh, building information models, uh, using open standards, IFC, which is uh, well the most used and uh, the best we have at the moment. Um, could be better, of course. But uh, we are emphasizing uh, open formats because we want the development of these formats to also speed up. If we're not using them, if we're not implementing them in government systems, uh, then we are essentially you know, uh, kicking the development of, uh, of these open standards in the leg. So we're hindering them. We're putting obstacles in front of them. So we want to remove those obstacles. We want to support the market in, uh, in creating solutions for, uh, that rely on open standards. And, and uh, we hope to get live with this uh, solution uh, by the middle of next year. So you can submit a BIM model and you can do already automated checks uh, on that BIM model uh, to see whether or not it's uh, according to legislation, according to planning requirements, um, according to local authorities' requirements, uh, fire safety, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and this is just the beginning. So it's not going to be you know everything at once. So we are doing it in incrementally as an agile approach. So we're launching the first basic uh, model checks, uh, but uh, we're building a system that is expandable, where you can build on top of it and you can create more and more uh, checks and controls. Um, yeah and compliance checks. Okay, next one. Um, another interesting project we're involved with is, uh, is, is classification. And um, this is, um, I think, a topic that uh, covers a very, very wide range. Uh, the problem we have in Estonia is we don't, we don't have a common language for uh, the construction industry. 
and we don't have a really kind of uh, established uh, classification system to uh, that is used within you know uh, uh, the whole building life cycle. So we started looking for one, something that would be suitable for a digital process that would cover both uh, infrastructure and buildings, uh, and that would support the entire life cycle. Uh, we started a collaboration between uh, many of the Nordic countries, uh, Baltics, and other European countries, uh, Czech Republic, for example. And where we've now ended up at, uh, which is on the next slide, is uh, a, a collaboration, uh, I don't want to say platform, but yeah, it's a collaboration platform to say. Uh, but it's, um, it's called CCI, Construction Classification International. and this is the best system we found uh, that would be suitable for us. And the Czech guys also found this uh, as a really good system. It is originating from Denmark. It is based on standards. What we are doing is we're creating now, together with the, with the Czechs and the Danes, a new legal entity in Brussels so that we can ensure that this systems, system, CCI, is free to use for everybody. So there's no... Uh, money uh, in this uh, organization. It's going to be a non-profit organization, and we're setting up it, setting it up in Brussels. And uh, we hope uh, more and more members will join this initiative. And I know Lithuania has already decided that they're going to use CCI as the base for their uh, national classification system. And we have a lot of interest from others as well. But moving on, uh, that's it for me. Uh, I would like to thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, there's a lot of other things going on, and if you have any questions, uh, you can send them to me by email, or you can ask them here. Um, so, do we have anything on Slido? No? Great. Then uh, I hope it was all clear, uh, rather short, uh, short and sweet. But now I would ha like to see if uh, Tony is online. Tony, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Great to hear you, Tony. So how's, uh, how's the weather in Finland? It's good. It's sunny. It's not like September. So uh, let's enjoy while we have the time for it. Great. But uh, I would like to hand over now the, uh, uh, the presentation to you. So take it away. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess that I have my slides also available to be showed. Let's wait the technical guys to make happen. Yeah. Changing. So, Jan, I, I, I guess that we are again sh telling our stories in a row. And while, while we are uh, waiting my sp slides, it's supposed to start with, um, here we go. All right. So, uh, like I said, uh, I'm uh, Tony Luhti, and I'm going to explain a little bit about the learnings, what we have, what we have done here in Finland. So, uh, we have been building this kind of uh, platform of trust, a uh, data platform for real estate and construction industries all, all, almost two years from now. And uh, instead of explaining that much what we are doing, especially with our platform, I, I was thinking that it, it would be valuable for all of you to hear what kind of things we have learned and especially related to data, because all the platforms are gathering also data and, you know, you can manage your processes and you can develop new services and business models and innovate new, new kind of things based on the platform, what you are running on and you're basing your business on and uh, typically when we are discussing with companies and I'm not saying that small or mid-sized companies but I'm, I'm saying that most of the enterprise level companies you know who have been working on the real estate and construction industries uh, for years and whenever they are actually thinking about the digitalization or data or platforms they are thinking about the examples of the media and the 
and the you know typically presentations are providing like a uh, Netflix or Uber or whatever y- who are utilizing the modern mega trends technological mega trends in their existing business or creating new business models that are disrupting the existing industries and by why I'm saying that is that typically typically when we are going to discuss with the companies and whenever we are starting to talk about digitalization they are saying hey we we purchased an ai solution so we have a digital strategy or we are building up our own platform so we are actually making this all digitalization happen and it will be you know a staple part of our existing business model and so on but actually that's quite challenging and costly it was research already that uh, one platform development costs around three million euros and thinking about the digitalize project here i'm guessing that it's a pretty reasonable decision to do this together and you know help the entire industry to actually digitize, digitize the entire industry and making it beneficial for most of the companies and from that point of view, I, I think that the low-hanging fruits and the most reasonable starting points are actually the, wo- the ones who we can already imagine. And from that, that point of view, whenever we're discussing about, you know, which kind of companies do have data? And, and typically the answer for that question is that, hey, we, have, we do have data. We are finding, you know, from our sales solution management or whatever CRM system we may have, we are saying that, hey, we are checking from the data how much sales we did on last month. And is that really, you know, modern way to use data that your platform is gathering? No, typically, actually, you need to ask how much sales we are going to miss on next month because we are having too many internal meetings. But these kind of questions cannot be answered by the data because we don't have the, all the data available. And from that point of view, platforms are in the, in the core of all business models because platforms can actually gather all the data from all these individual sources and make it available for your decision-making solution and so on. So uh, may I have a next slide? So this is typically the way how it's how it starts for the companies uh, who, are, who we are interacting with. So the top-down model, so let's say that there is a technical persons who are saying that we have the most latest and most modern AI solution available. So then the business decision guys will start to figure it out where we can get the data that we can actually feed to the AI solution. And then they will actually, you know, get down to the question what must be integrated? What are the, all the data sources? You know, during 2019, there was all over 4 billion new devices connected to internet. And all of these IoT devices and new, new smart devices are producing more data. And at the same time, you know, one integration costs uh, over 15,000 euros in Europe. And it takes up to 20 to 30 business days to make it happen. Okay, so let's let's say that you have a ten individual systems that were that you are using to run your business. Ten systems, ten data sources, meaning that you you're gonna spend like one hundred and fifty thousand euros on integrations to make the data available for your AI, and that still doesn't mean that all the data is compatible. Meaning that if you are buying the solutions from US or China or uh, uh, European countries or Euro- European service providers, they will definitely use different standards, different data models. They are mixing dots and periods on their data models. And, you know, some of them are talking about gallons and feeds, and some of them are talking about uh, centimeters and liters and so on. And you, you're going to waste a lot of time. You're going to waste your entire business case on integrating these new data sources and making the data compatible. And also, you know, trying to understand what kind of questions you're supposed to do towards the data. And typically the questions, like I said, are not that sophisticated, meaning that there is no competitive advantage coming from the data. Or if you are not able to evaluate the business case for the data, then you're going to integrate only the sources that are essential for you to make your business 
decisions somehow reasonable. And on that point of view, there is no new understanding created by the data because only the limited amount of data is available. So can I have a next slide, please? So um, based on the based on the work what we have done with the enterprise level companies um, with our platform, we have noticed that almost every of the companies are utilizing all the megatrends like the ecosystem thinking so that everything cannot be done by by one company and then the platform economy so that the platform is in the heart and all the transactions and collaboration will happen through the platform and then api economy so that you are actually connecting all your different technical technical sources together via api or services and then the data economy so Everybody is saying that data is new oil and, and, and so on. So you, you're going to need to utilize all of these uh, in this kind of uh, multi-level environment so that you can actually get the benefit from all of them. And because there was 4 billion new devices connected to internet and you already have a, you know many smart sensors and data sources and applications and whatever available, you need to be able to connect them all so that you can actually benefit from the data and create new knowledge. And then you need to take care of the data models and then the security nowadays and then at, at, at that point, when you have done all this, then you are able to utilize actually the digital twins and, and AI solution or VR or whatever. And this is a pretty big project for all of, all of you guys individually. So what I'm saying here that the DigiPlace project in ger general is a brilliant idea to make this all together. And can I have a next slide please? Thank you. And so when, when when the DigiPlace project is actually helping to create this reference architecture so that everybody don't have to reinvent the wheel every time when they are thinking the same questions again and whenever whenever you have a different a different business model or different you know need business needs you you can solve these needs and requirements with the with the same architecture and with the same thinking like i just previously described all of the companies are ending up to the same kind of uh, overview of the business model of the business stack how i, I would say it and um, on, on the last slide i want to i want to describe what we are doing so uh, we are doing we are doing this platform of trust solution and we have three value propositions uh, first of all we have the self-service tools for integrations meaning that instead of spending this fifteen thousand euros you can actually connect all your data sources in a few hours or a few days instead of weeks or months and it, it, it will be cost free because it's built in on our platform and th then then the biggest part on the data harmonizer uh, typically smart cities and the big environments like stadiums and libraries and shopping malls and whatever are spending tens of days or uh, you know can be a month in a year to actually manually harmonize the data to be able so that they are able to utilize the data in their other solutions and then the last part which is something that the u.s companies are not doing either is the trust engine so we have made a research that there are 16 individual factors how you can evaluate the trust index for your data and by that i mean that if you are making a, you are using the world-class ai solution and you have a best of the best algorithm and you are feeding all your data for that algorithm in the future make the business decisions what happens if you cannot trust the data and you have no mechanism to actually raise the red flag hey hey that this data looks bad it's it's old it's it's corrupted or it's coming from the wrong sensor or whatever you know factor you might be failing and from that point of view if you're running a business of 10 million or 100 million euros and you are making an automated decision based on the data you need to be able to trust it and this is the one of the key learnings what we have learned during past two years that almost none of the companies are actually taking focus on how much they can trust on their existing data. And all the platforms are actually producing and generating more data that you can actually own and use and share with your stakeholders and ecosystems and partners. But what if 
it's not trustable. And that is the key question that will pop to everyone's mind in next three years. And with the DigitPlace project, I think, you know, we can all solve this kind of issues together. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Uh, I think uh, the, the platform of trust is a really, really interesting uh, project you're running. Uh, we have a question on Slido um, for you. Uh, is the Finnish government also involved with the platform of trust development? Uh, yeah, yeah, we are getting, uh, actually we got 19 months ago, a uh, 5 million euro of funding from Business Finland, which is, uh, which, which is an institution in Finland. And also four, four weeks ago, we won a deal over 2 million euros to enable smart city projects in Helsinki, Turku and Kuopio, which is of course related heavily on the government and gathering all the data from the, from the smart cities. Okay. But. Who is behind the platform of trust initiative? I understand it's more coming from the industry, right? Definitely, yeah. So we are 100% owned by the Vastu Group, which is actually owned by the, by the construction and real estate industry unions and these companies. So, so we are heavily involved on the industry development and we are getting targets from the board of directors who are actually giving us a prioritization for helping the industry to make these data flows happen and, you know, utilizing new service and business models. Okay. Um, does anybody in the audience have further questions? Okay. If all not, right. thank you all. Feel free to shout a question via email or uh, via LinkedIn or whatever you wish. Happy to answer. Thanks, Tony. So we are a few minutes behind schedule. So um, without further ado, I would like to uh, move on to the next presentation, uh, which is about the reference architecture framework. And we should have online Alberto Pavan from uh, Politecnico di Milano. Are you there, Alberto? So we're doing a quick check to see if he can, uh, he can hear Hi, us. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Do you listen to me? Yes. Hi, Alberto. So you are uh, Hi. Tuni tuning in from Italy, right? Yes, from Italy. Okay, perfect. The floor is yours. Uh, if I uh, could have uh, the first slide, uh, I present you the work package five uh, uh, to the reference uh, architecture frameworks, uh, the beginning and after I give the, the floor to Nicolas uh, to the analysis of uh, uh, the work package five. Uh, next slide, next slide, please. Uh, next one. So when we talking about uh, a platform, uh, obviously we talk about uh, web or cloud, but uh, we need to understand which kind of platform we have on the market. So if we look at the, to the software out, probably they think uh, their uh, suite of software are uh, um, a platform. Or if we think about the company work with data and, serv and service, they think uh, their uh, browser or their server farm or their data center are uh, a platform. But in the same time, if we look at the, to the construction center, uh, construction sector, uh, probably now uh, all the actors think uh, a big CDE uh, could be a, a platform for uh, a construction center. And uh, if I look at the manufacturer to the uh, other industry, uh, the business platform, the old business platform, uh, typical ERP, PLM, CRM, uh, are the platform. So when we uh, talk about the platform in the beginning, we could understand which kind or which mix of these kind of platform could be. Uh, next slide, please. In the other way, we, uh, and we, we need to understand which kind of knowledge uh, we have and we need and we'll, uh, we'll have in the future. Because uh, 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 in the past, uh, uh, normally we had uh, uh, something like uh, a, 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 a 
surprised of uh, of knowledge they produce knowledge and they put in the in the storage uh, uh, in, in in a book uh, and so produce information is really hard and expensive and so you trust uh, all information is a book is uh, is true uh, and you are confident with uh, all the information but uh, uh, the problem is uh, you need uh, uh, the book to, or you need to memorize your information because the book is far of you. And in the, uh, sorry, you could back to the, uh, the, the, okay. But now we have a different uh, world with the digitalization. So you have uh, a, a access, your smartphone is an access to all the information. So you have, uh, you don't need to memorize the information because you could have uh, instantly, but you could add all kinds of instantly. And so all the information could produce any users and any uh, consumer. So you don't be have to trust in this kind uh, of information, or what say before then, um, um, the, the speaker uh, talking before the me and uh, what we have to look at uh, in the end is the value of this uh, information because uh, the information are a di have a different value but this information is not good if uh, is a value only for uh, who manage this information if you want uh, a platform win to win we need uh, a lot of information uh, but we need all the market uh, uh, will be wants to share their information. And so there is a problem of privacy and in the other way, the problems of copyright. So uh, how I, I could persuade all the industry to give me the information uh, near the board of copyright uh, because I need more information to work uh, over with, uh, I don't know, with uh, uh, artificial intelligence to understand which kind of information is really true and with, uh, which kind of information is not true. Because it's different, um, the, the access is different, uh, the, the produce of uh, the meaning of uh, uh, this kind of information. So uh, the, next, uh, the next slide, please. So in the starting of, uh, uh, of the DigiPlace project, when we uh, do, uh, when we write a course, uh, we think uh, one flow of information starting from the market, going probably to the national platform because uh, France have a croquis, uh, in, uh, UK have, um, um, have uh, NBS and so, Probably the flow is the market uh, information going to the national platform and uh, all national platform, the future national platform go to uh, the European platform uh, and back to the market again. And in the next uh, slide, please. The other flow is uh, the flows information coming from the user and so from the actors and uh, filtered by national and European information uh, arrive to two kind of different market because we have a too strong market in our sector. So we have a, a public market and a private market. And so uh, DigiPlace is uh, uh, the only one uh, future platform uh, have uh, the member states inside uh, the beneficiary because uh, our market is uh, really different than the, uh, the uh, other uh, normally manufacturing market. So the um, the presence of member states and the public market is really important uh, for us. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, next one. So we uh, try to. Uh, understand this word and uh, to understand with, with this word we make a, a, a big uh, brainstorming uh, to analyze uh, the problem so in the bottom the digital integration what we need uh, in so, sorry in the, the upper, in the bottom the level which kind of level Europe national uh, single building single product uh, and so on. and the focus the fourth focus is language rule market uh, 
and uh, uh, market and products and servers. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a, a, a big map uh, of uh, any idea we uh, have to look at uh, to understand which kind of platform probably will uh, we make a reference uh, architecture. Next slide. Starting from language and rule, so the language is natural language and uh, uh, IT language. So we need uh, probably a domain and probably we need a new uh, ontology, but, uh, and so semantic web, link and data, and so on and so on. But in the other way, we need uh, the operational collaboration of uh, the IT. And so we need uh, which kind of open language from, coming from IT. And uh, in the bottom, the rule, we have the standard, so the technical rules and the law, uh, and so the importance of a member state. Uh, and we need to integrate uh, uh, the standard and the law. We need a new accessibility uh, of the standard and law. And obviously, we need uh, to check uh, what uh, all the uh, sector produce. Uh, to standard and to roll. So we need uh, the requirements, uh, but we need a computational requirements uh, where the machine uh, uh, could uh, understand what we will do and could uh, correct uh, what is wrong or not. So all the problem is not only clash detection typically of uh, our sector, but the real new way is uh, code checking. So how the machine could understand the rule and the standard and could checking the uh, the rule and the standard automatically uh, to all the sector produce in terms of the product and in terms of, uh, in term of uh, uh, design too. Uh, the other way is a uh, product uh, service and market. And so the product service, the industry and manufacturing, building doors uh, 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 and so on, and construction center uh, build uh, chats, oh, sorry, before windows, doors, and so on, and uh, in construction, the, the builders, uh, uh, building and infrastructure. So we have an object of our market, but we have two markets that we saw before, public and private, and so the subject is different subject. is the public subject and private subject, and they mix uh, the object of our sector to the subject inside the action. And so probably uh, we need uh, a new to have uh, in, in the in the in the other right a digital object of our uh, sector, we need a new class and new attribute. So uh, a contract is a, a class is an object too, like a window, uh, and a worker is an object too, like a, a window or like a, 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 a contract, and. So we need to produce a digital twin of the asset, uh, of the asset, so the asset model, and we need uh, to update in all kind of data because we have a, a strange product with uh, a very long life cycle, and we need uh, the data not only in three years, uh, the, the normal life of a new product uh, of manufacturing, three, five years, but we need uh, a, a data coming uh, and and operating in, uh, in uh, 100 years in Italy, 500, 1,000 e uh, years, uh, and uh, we have an, any kind of different uh, farm because uh, our products is our farm. So for us, Industry 5.0 is really particularly uh, approach because uh, we work inside our product for a long time, for 100 years, for 200 years, for 500 years, because we make a renovation, uh, refurnishment, uh, manufacturing, and so on. So uh, a data from uh, industry 4.0 uh, for us is really different than uh, the manufacturing. What in the in the in the in the last uh, the digital integration when you think uh, when we think about the digital integration in our sector we obviously we talking about open data and so be the smart uh, and uh, w3g but uh, we have to talk about uh, 
which kind of database we need. So we need a related database, or we need an object database, or we need a graph database because we work with uh, big data. Uh, and so which kind of uh, database and DBMS we need, which kind of security we need. So we have to talk to blockchain, to, to blockchain, to the copyright, to privacy, to a new smart contract, and for probably a digital cadastre, European cadastre, because you know, uh, all real estates are in the, in the back of uh, the financing in all the world. And so the real estate is a, is a great part of uh, the financing world, financing world. And probably in the future, we need uh, not only a local cadastre, but uh, a cadastre of all the building uh, inside uh, in Europe. And in the, in the, in the end, uh, which kind of uh, digital integration we need in business management. So as I talked before, PLM, ERP, but object library, CDE, and GIS, because our products stay over the land or stay over a land in a different border. So in the different country infrastructure and so our platform is a building platform, is an in, uh, infrastructure platform, but is a GIS platform too. And in the end, uh, next slides, please. Which kind of level? Because we are uh, probably uh, we will be uh, became a, a, a European platform, but the European platform uh, coming from member state platform and. Uh, this platform take the data inside this all different environment and this environment is building is infrastructure but is product too so the level of the information is really really different you need information from infrastructure uh, and auto route but you need information for a single building and you are need information for a single world windows inside a single building so the number of the information and the number of upgrading, looking in the bottom the IoT and so upgrading of this kind of data is a lot and and is shared in a lot in a long, really long time. So our problem is our product have a really a long cycle life, uh, uh, different than all the other. Uh, industry and the uh, manufacturing too. So to look at what this is the brainstorming, the, the starting point and the analysis uh, to, to look at to the analysis we will do and we and now we, 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 we do, uh, I, I give the floor to Nicolas Naville. Nicolas, are you there with us? You hear me? Yeah. Yes, we hear you. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, uh, Alberto, uh, for introducing all these key concepts for the reasoning about uh, platform architectures. Uh, I'm Nicolas Naville from CSTB in France, and we are leading uh, the work package five of the project, uh, which is about uh, defining the reference architecture framework of DigiPlace platforms. Uh, so after this presentation by Alberto, I just wanted to take one step back to uh, explain to you how we are currently proceeding to define this reference architecture framework. So uh, next slide, please. First of all, uh, introducing uh, the main outputs uh, of uh, DigiPlace project. Uh, they are structured uh, along those three pillars, which are first defining the key use cases and high level specifications of the platforms then defining the reference architecture framework and then the last work package of the project as introduced by Ziga will be defining the strategy roadmap of DigiPlace. Uh, to put it in simple words, uh, the specifications and use case analysis, uh, no, back again, please. Uh, the use case and specifications is about defining the vision of the digital transformation of the European construction industry in order to achieve the core objectives of the digital transformation. 
so this is a little bit, yes, uh, the, the vision that needs to be defined and also shared among the stakeholders, which is also a key aspect of the project, reaching uh, a shared consensus. And then the reference architecture framework is the required architectures that we need to support this vision in terms of digital tools, services, and platforms in terms of interoperability, data and knowledge sharing, and so on and so forth. And then the strategy roadmap will be defining how to get there from the current situation in terms of research efforts, pilot projects, regulations, deployment of new services, and most certainly uh, required uh, European calls uh, in the following years. Next slide, please. So let's focus on this reference architecture framework and what it's going to be. Uh, as was already discussed uh, extensively in the project, we are not only building a new European website, uh, let's say it like that, but rather defining a, pre a comprehensive set of common guidelines for building, implementing and deploying digital platforms for the construction sector across Europe, uh, be they public or private, local or European. So it's more like a meta platform than just a, a single platform. And these guidelines uh, can be of different types. We will have general guidelines for implementing digital platforms about interoperability, using open standards, data security and privacy. We will have a referential of tools and services to be developed or generalized in order to support key use cases. And certainly we will also have a special focus on required public services and regulations, uh, both at uh, EU and member state levels. Uh, and uh, as part of this third category, we could propose to have a proper European platform, and that certainly will be part of the output of DigiPlace, but not the only output. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just to remind you how uh, this definition of uh, high-level specifications and the reference architecture framework uh, are based on the previous uh, works of the project. So mainly the work package three, which was about analyzing the existing platforms and the level of uh, digitalization. And work package four, with, which was about, uh, and which is still about uh, understanding the needs and expectations of stakeholders, particularly SMEs, and trying to identify the measures that are necessary to mitigate the barriers of, uh, to digitalization. So we are using all those, uh, all the outputs of these uh, previous works. Next slide, please. Okay, so what is uh, the strategy that we are deploying to uh, share this common vision of the digital transformation of the sector? Uh, we identified uh, five areas of concern, of discussion, which are the following. Uh, first one is about common language, interoperability and standards. We have one about rules and public services, one about data and knowledge sharing, one about environmental performance, and the last one, but not least, is about business, market, and collaboration. Uh, so for these five areas, we had five working groups. Uh, and the key, uh, the key point to, to have in mind is that those are not uh, 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 independent areas, but rather different points of view to address the whole landscape of uh, digital transformation. And in terms of structure of uh, our work, for each area, we identified several topics. And for each topic, we have several use cases, or some, sometimes they are not proper use cases, but rather subtopics, because it's not easy as we have such a wide uh, uh, landscape of uh, issues to address. It's not always possible to go down uh, to the scale of the use cases and to the level of details required to describe use cases. So next slide, please. Just to give you an example of uh, the way we are working, we are uh, reasoning at the same time on the construction sector use cases and this vision of the transformation of the sector and on the required architecture to support this or on the reference architecture framework guidelines that will be uh, proposed to support these use cases. Uh, so I have an example on the on next slide, which is uh, about one of the key uh, use cases that uh, Jan talked about for uh, Estonia platform e-construction is about digital building permit. So this would be uh, the use case 
for example, digitalized building permit application using BIM models and automated rules checking. So this is the use case. And we will be thinking also uh, in terms of uh, guidelines. Uh, here are just some examples. Uh, so by the use of open BIM standards, dedicated model view definitions, the need of ontologies for urban planning rules, and the required public tools and services to support this use case. So this is an example. And now uh, I'll try to keep short because uh, the time is, uh, is running. Uh, but just a few words about each of the five areas. Uh, so this very important one is about common language, interoperability and standards. Here the general approach uh, that we are following is not to replace uh, standardization bodies, of course, but rather provide common guidelines for successful standards implementation about interoperable product databases, link be uh, between BIM and IoT, open BIM implementation guidelines, and promote the use of open standards, or again, harmonize data requirements in public or private contracts. Uh, on next slides, I have some key aspects that uh, went uh, out of the discussions. Uh, I won't detail everything, but maybe the first and the last one are interesting. The first one is we agreed that there is a need to rely as much as possible on semantic standards uh, and go beyond a syntax standards that we have today. Uh, so this is very important. And the last one, uh, also the need to fill the gap between the standardization bodies, the experts on one side, and the end users on the other side, because we, we, we feel there is still an important gap here. And so maybe we'll try to define a process for end users to engage more to help develop the standard and help create user guides for end users. So this is a, a process to, to put in place. Uh, next slide. So here, the area that rules and public services, the idea is to address all the interactions of the construction projects with the administration. So maybe this area will be, would be close to what uh, the e-construction platform uh, in uh, Estonia is. Uh, also address public procurement or regulatory issues. And among the topics that we are addressing are digitalized building permits, use of BIM in public procurement, coordination of national regulations, uh, B-Log and digital building logbook, and also uh, checkers of rules. One other that I didn't mention in the slide, uh, but uh, which is present in e-construction, is the idea to develop uh, a digital twin at uh, urban scale or even national scale, uh, like in Estonia. Next slide, please. This area is about data and knowledge sharing. So here, the idea to discuss all the issues about uh, the sharing of data, be it at product scale, at project scale, or even at larger scale. So sharing of both public but also private data. And uh, try to see how uh, data analytics analytic tools could be used and also uh, artificial intelligence could be used in, uh, in the construction industry. We're also addressing uh, best practices and knowledge transfer, uh, and particularly about uh, digital processes. Next slide, please. Environmental performance. Um, this one is uh, rather transversal uh, to the other areas, but we decided to have a special focus on it as it is really important also for the European Commission, obviously for all the stakeholders. So we have a strong overlap with other uh, areas. And among the topics addressed are uh, environmental product data for BIM, uh, generalization of uh, life cycle assessment, calculation of energy performance certificates, circularity, and the use of uh, digital tools to, to help uh, circularity. And finally, also trying to promote levels framework and the sharing of uh, environmental performance data. We always have in mind to have this connection with other European initiatives, uh, as it is one of the, the objectives of uh, DigiPlace project. And the last area, and I will finish with this one, is about business market and collaboration. So in this area, we are addressing 
the digital transformation of the construction project based on the project life cycle. Um, we are addressing also collaborative platforms and com common data environments and contracts and market issues. So this last one is very wide scope. We addressed uh, common data environment implementation, beam services, marketplaces, and access to beam services, digital supply chain, and uh, finally, contractualization and smart contracts issues. Uh, for this one, I entered into more details about uh, the use cases or subtopics that uh, uh, were discussed during our workshop. Maybe as we don't have much time, I will skip this or just give two or three examples and just then jump to my conclusion. Uh, maybe I take as example the digital supply chain uh, topic. Uh, after our discussions, we identify the need to define a BIM approach in the call for tender phase. Uh, to uh, also have uh, guidelines for e-catalogs and integration of manufacturers BIM objects into BIM models obviously, and also address the related transformations of the digital of the supply chain, address the link between design and manufacturing, and finally also don't forget the construction equipment data and their integration in digital supply chain. So this is just an example. Uh, as you see, we have uh, many topics and many uh, subtopics. Here I'll just take one example in this one, uh, which is um, Yes, one that I already said, it, but it's quite important here. It's about the digitalized building permit application and delivery with automated rules checking that we find in this category here related to the construction project life cycle. So maybe I, now I can move to the next slide. Uh, and just one, one, no, yes, two examples here. Uh, in this last category, we have uh, the evolutions of ERP and CRM tools which are also important to address the digitalization of the sector. And one uh, other uh, key uh, use case, which is about sharing data of big public infrastructures. We already mentioned the uh, urban scale digital twin, but he here it's also about creating repositories of uh, data for all large public infrastructures. Uh, we already see some initiatives in uh, countries such as uh, Italy or maybe Estonia. Uh, but this is also one of the key uh, possible use cases. So sorry for trying to be uh, to keep short for this. Uh, it was very synthetic. Uh, the next steps uh, will be first from the results of the workshops that we had in the beginning of the summer. Uh, we have till the end of September to define these platform specifications and submit them to the European Commission. Then we will need to have some uh, a new round of consultation of the community of stakeholders on these specifications. So one, once we have a more, more structured vision uh, and more synthetic, we will definitely share it with uh, the community and trying to get feedback on it. And then work on deliverable uh, 5.2, which is the proper reference architecture framework, and we will have to complete it by uh, the end of 2020. So the work is uh, currently, uh, yes, starting. And then uh, in the beginning of 2021, we will work on the, the, uh, the strategy roadmap. Uh, so I finish with this. Thank you, Nicolas. Um, one thought that uh, question that popped into my mind uh, was when you were giving the presentation, it was a really good overview of practically all the initiatives or ongoing um, uh, kind of uh, approaches towards digitization of the construction industry. Uh, it's quite a kind of a vast sea of different uh, aspects and different uh, perspectives. Uh, is DigiPlace project really going to kind of address all of them or is there going to be a more narrow focus towards uh, one or the other? Uh, I would say the way I see it is uh, one of uh, the uh, yes uh, the interests of DigiPlace is to provide this uh, comprehensive vision. I think it's quite important an important output to try to provide a comprehensive vision. 
And then the second answer is that uh, the strategy roadmap is key is, uh, for answering this question. Um, DigiPlace is not going to answer all the, the questions and the issues right away, but to propose a strategy roadmap to get there on the current situation, as I explained, uh, in several steps and identifying the areas and topics that need to be uh, analyzed in more details and that require further research projects, further European calls, further collective work. So we are not solving everything right away. This is quite important. And then last, a third, a third answer to your question is that uh, despite what I, what I just said, we are going to try to be as specific as possible on some key use cases. So trying to select maybe 10, 15, I don't know, use cases and trying to develop, to develop them a little bit more uh to so to do yes to make sure not to remain only strategic but also uh practical about uh, the things that need to be done uh, in the following years okay thank you nicolas and uh, alberto as well uh, so we're um, a little bit behind our schedule uh but we're gonna break for lunch now and after lunch uh, we're gonna be back at uh, 1 15 1 20 uh, estonian time that's um, 12, 15, 12, 20 uh, CET. And then we're going to take a look at the strategic roadmap. And Alan will hopefully introduce this for us. So uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, see you in uh, 45 minutes about.
And welcome back to the DigiPlace Regional Workshop here in Tallinn, Estonia, um, with a small audience here in uh, in Swiss Hotel, but uh, a bigger audience uh, online watching us uh, through the magic of internet. And um, this session and the today's workshop is being recorded as well. So if you didn't have a chance to view it uh, live, you can view the recording afterwards and get the information on demand. But we have uh, uh, a couple of more hours uh, to entertain you <laughs> with, uh, with digital construction topics. Um, in this part of the session, we're going to look at the uh, strategic roadmap of DigiPlace and then also the community of uh, stakeholders, uh, how you can be a part of the uh, Digi DigiPlace um, project have your say and be more involved. And uh, we're also going to be doing some brainstorming questions and answers. So that is your opportunity to join the discussion at slido.com uh, with the keyword DigiPlace. So if, uh, yeah, we can la later show a slide about uh, that as well. But uh, it's really, imp really simple. Just go to slido.com and enter the uh, hashtag DigiPlace. So you'll be able to then submit your questions online and we will take them later on uh, in the schedule and uh, try to answer them. But now uh, I would uh, like to hand over uh, the digital floor to Alain uh, Zarli. Are you with us? Can you hear us? Hello, Jan. Can you hear me? Yes, Alain. I can hear you loud and clear. So where are you uh, uh, tuning in from? Yes. Uh, well, I, I can't really complain. I'm, uh, I'm on the French Riviera, but uh, well, indeed working at home. Uh, but I'm still very, very disappointed not being with you. Uh, you know why. Huh? We have been exchanging many mails about the current situation, and unfortunately, we have to deal with it. So, um, but anyway, I'm very, very pleased to, um, to uh, introduce you and the audience and also all our colleagues who are connected to this, um, to this uh, uh, strategy that we are trying to elaborate. Uh, and maybe at, 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 at the same time that maybe we can start, yes, with the, uh, with the slides. I just would like to mention first that, well, I'm presenting it also on behalf of Sarah Ngoti and Brigitte Jacquemont uh, from the Ministry uh, of Construction who are, by the way, the work package leader in DigiPlace of, uh, of this related to this strategic roadmap. And also that the work is going to really and deeply, tangibly start uh, from 1st of September. So, of course, well, uh, all the elements and ingredients of my presentation uh, are, of course, subject to future discussions and, and are challengeable. So this is something which is very, very important to, to, to keep in mind. Uh, maybe very, very quickly to introduce, uh, based on, on the previous presentations, uh, understanding, well, what is the main technical about, uh, when I said technical, uh, it's about the reference architecture framework. We, we view it as, uh, let's say, kind of delimited, deployable, and which is an evolving is a very, very important term here. Evolving set of specifications and also development and deployment guidance uh, that uh, should allow the progressive generalization of digital platforms. Uh, as well as connected applications and services. And uh, uh, this reference architecture framework is going to be elaborated on, on top of some key principles. Uh, a first one is definitely the principle of a commonly agreed minimal but sufficient interoperability levels in terms of data and software for all the platforms and applications that will be compliant with this reference architecture framework. The fact that, of course, uh, first of all, we don't plan to start from scratch, but we do believe that uh, this is based on the common standards, the current ones and the future ones, 
uh, forming potentially a baseline for the current state of the art of existing solutions, but also at the technical commitment to, to identify needs and required evolution of those standards. And also, well, as it has been already raised uh, and very nicely introduced by Giga in his, in his presentation, uh, this is a, a matter of kind of a generalized access to uh, data spaces, uh, infrastructures and platforms and catalogs of services that could be available to all. Uh, and with services, of course, we think about many, many different types of, service, of services. You can think about a very, very simple services that will allow you to connect to some database of related or describing and providing uh, information about, for instance, the French or the German uh, national regulations uh, uh, related to energy efficiency, for instance, building. That could be access to simulation platforms. That could be even more complex services. That could be, for instance, linking to a digital twin container to which, which is kind of more advanced service, where you will provide your beam data and as well as your dynamic data coming from sensors, for instance, and where you will access, for instance, in this container to a digital twin of, 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 your, of your building or infrastructure of your built asset. It could be different types of services. And of course, uh, as it was introduced by Nicolas in his presentation, it's going to rely on the identification of those various use cases that we have started to develop in package five. But it must be clear that all those, and, and this may be uh, another answer to your question, to your last question, Jan, before the lunch break, it's not uh, the intention uh, of DigiPlace, of course, uh, to develop platforms, but also to details necessarily the potential implementation for all the use cases that have been identified. Those use cases are, of course, for us useful to identify what are the key elements and ingredients of uh, a RAF compliant digital platform and to identify, of course, what will be all the use cases and scenarios that such platforms should serve in the future. Uh, next one, please. So indeed, when we refer uh, to this DigiPlace strategy roadmap for future achievements, I would say that it's a kind of, well, how to say this, maybe a cocktail of uh, future research, but also governance and stakeholder engagement. And uh, what is very, very important is that uh, in Work Package 3 and Work Package 4 of, of, of DigiPlace, uh, the role of them were, were, were to feed, uh, I would say, the, the reference architecture, framework, specification, and the strategy. Uh, this is that this strategy is also considering main, that many of the fundamental ingredients are, are, are on hand in terms of research and innovation as well. So what is going to be this strategy roadmap that we intend to develop, by the way, with all of you, not only uh, just a, a few bunch of, of partners in, in DigiPlace, it's really with all of you and the, commu and the DigiPlace community of, of interest. Well, it's a set of delimited, measurable, and time-stamped actions with the associated instruments that we can think of, supporting a generalization of the deployment and use of those digital platforms in Europe. And I put by 2027 uh, because, well, this in some way also is linked to the end of the next of the upcoming framework program, which is Horizon Europe. Uh, but, but of course, uh, the idea is, is to develop this over the next decade and, and probably beyond. Uh, there are various actions that we can think of. Uh, once, once again, uh, what is rather new, I would say, in, in, in DigiPlace is this collaboration between many construction stakeholders from various levels, uh, European, national, including regional ones, with associations and researchers as well. 
And this is probably the very first time uh, in my professional life, more than, uh, more than 30 years, that I've seen such grouping of so many associations and, and stakeholders from the construction sector. So the idea that, of course, uh, is that uh, we, we, we want to, key, to leverage on, on this association and this should be the basis for nurturing the establishment of a common market of digital platforms and apps. The reference architecture framework is about really this establishment and supporting this is the establishment of this common market of digital platform. It's about, of course, providing guiding principles for data producers, data publishers, service uh, publish services publishers and services consumer. It's also a, a little bit about potential interconnection about various level of information data spaces and platforms throughout Europe. Should they be, by the way, at a European level or a national or a more regional or local level? And once again, it's very important to understand that DigiPlace is not about specifying and, and, and even more implementing uh, one platform or the only digital platform. It's really about uh, erecting, uh, 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 leveraging, I would say, uh, on, on also on the existing platform and services and see how they can be, I would say, uh, aggregate in, an, in some more harmonized way. Uh, another point is that we, based this reference architecture, it's, it seems to us that it's very important to have a European set of experimental projects and facilities uh, implementing and assessing the rough set of specification. Uh, and of course, relying on a representative set of business scenarios. Uh, and this was also the objective, of course, of the various use cases uh, that, have been, that have been introduced by Nicolas in, in his presentation before lunch. And uh, there is something which is also very important. I mentioned that our goal is not to have a prescriptive approach, but rather a, a European level agreed holistic reference vision and framework uh, with, of course, technical process and regulatory boundaries and guidance that embraces all the separate elements contributing to the future construction digital platforms, but also with massive supporting a massive behavioral adoption because it can't be only from uh, about technical improvements uh, in, in this specific context. So developing awareness, expertise, skills related to the firms and services uh, is going to be, of course, of paramount importance. Should it be, uh, uh, and, and I would say on both sides, uh, users of the digital platforms, but also those who are going to feed those digital platforms with third-party software. Next one, please. So imagine for the time being uh, that uh, we can develop this DigiPlay strategy uh, according to, let's say, what we have called for the time being a three cornerstones approach. Promote a network, develop and deploy, experiment and capitalize. So what does that mean, roughly speaking, and, and, and very, very quickly? And once again, and this will be, of course, refined and, and developed in the near future. Uh, promote and work. Uh, we are, in the context of DigiPlace, of course, having this DigiPlace community of interest that will be introduced by Luigi in the next presentation. The intention and, and the need, from my point of view, is that we, we have to have a long, long class and stakeholders ecosystem or forum to promote and continuously refine the DigiPlace run. At the end of DigiPlace, uh, in May next year, there will be, of course, a full specification. But this specification of the reference architectures aims to be, of course, continuously refined and also based on some experiment of course, that we will leverage on this, uh, on this architecture. Uh, another point is developing the graphy of emerging or future initiatives and alliances potentially dedicated to digital platforms, apps, and services. Uh, I've been really uh, impressed by the entertaining presentations by, by uh, Jan and, uh, and, and, and Tony this morning. 
uh, exhibiting that really Estonia and Finland are quite advanced in, in, in developing platforms and digital tools. The idea, of course, to start from scratch, it's about updating and making them potentially compliant so that those platforms can, of course, interoperate among them and also interoperate with other platforms throughout Europe. And it's also, of course, leveraging on the experience uh, gained uh, with the development of those platforms in Estonia and Finland and, of course, uh, elsewhere, because there are all other developments in Germany, in France and Italy and, 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 and elsewhere. So it's about promoting and wet networking, and this is, uh, from our point of view, key. Uh, in, in really uh, developing and generalizing the use of digital platforms. Developing of and deploy because you also, uh, well, you need, we need probably to apply the principle uh, of learning by doing. So that means once again building uh, those digital platforms and common data spaces, deploying large scale pilots, and we'll be back to that later on. Uh, should it be, by the way, at a European level or a member state level or even regional or private initiatives? And also trying at the same time uh, in the coming years to erect a, a kind of AU repository of common in the uh, digital commons that uh, will be, uh, that will be uh, uh, instrumental uh, in, in also in this general Realization and ease of access uh, to data and services through platforms. And this is about common data ontologies, this is about reference data library, libraries, this is about data sharing protocols, some of them already being developed in alliances like, for instance, building stores or the smart buildings alliances in Europe and some others as well. But the idea is really also to erect this repository of, of digital commons. And this seems to be uh, very, very important. And then it's uh, about experimenting and capitalizing. Uh, and, and that would be, for instance, as an example, but, but once again, the list is not exhaustive. It could be about providing an observatory of large scale pilots and digital innovation hubs throughout Europe. Uh, but that could be as well, of course, uh, in terms of capitalizing in terms of contributing, of course, to national regulation directives and to standard developing organization. Next one, please. So as I mentioned to you, we, we, we are just starting indeed working on that. We have already, of course, some ideas and that we are going to structure. If I refer on, only on just on one example, uh, which is about developing and deploying, more specifically about the item deploying large scale pile at level of European, uh, at, at a European level, uh, we have been already, we have already started to discuss with the European Commission, which is of course under preparation of the Horizon Europe Framework Program and the first goals, by the way, in 2021, 2022. Uh, and we have started to discuss about some potential uh, future actions at a European level for now uh, providing large-scale pilots uh, that will be, of course, that will play the role of demonstrators as well uh, to deploy experiment and uh, the use and monitoring uh, of impact of, 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 of RAF, uh, of DigiPlace compliant platforms. And also based on, on the various development on, on work package 3 and 4 and the use case scenarios, we have already uh, suggested a kind of a structure for upcoming calls starting in 2021 up to 2025, potentially, uh, in terms of uh, developing innovation actions for having experimentation of those construction digital platforms and common data spaces. And we have considered that would be in particular development of those platforms in key areas, which are, which are, for instance, development of marketplaces or procurement places or solutions for, for smart working. And that would be really the elaboration of some, of some platforms with the intention, of course, of having demonstrators that could be, that should be, by the way, uh, pan-European demonstrators and, and, and platforms. 
And one can imagine that in the next step, we will develop more digital services, real large scale digital services on top of those platforms, and also a leverage on, on, on various databases to erect construction uh, data spaces at national level or at AU level. Next one, please. So, ju just and not to get into the details, because I do believe that this is already the end of my presentation, uh, but as you can imagine, yes, as I mentioned to you, well, we imagine these digital marketplace related to all the access to IoT data, digital twins, construction products, and so on and so forth. Digital procurement pl place, which is, of course, of real interest for public administration, uh yeah you have you have uh, you have exhibited in your presentation that estonia is already hard on this and it's quite advanced so i do believe that for instance we can capitalize and also leverage on your experience and your preliminary development on that but that should be of course developed throughout europe and also for instance on smart working in terms of smart approach to site working knowledge knowledge, safety, construction 4.0, as it was introduced by Ziga, and so on and so forth. These are examples uh, that should probably uh, allow us to have large-scale pilots very, very soon, uh, funded hopefully by the European Commission, to demonstrate and really kickstart, I would say, the generalization of those platforms. At the conclusion, next, next slide, please. Uh, at a very quick conclusion, uh, in terms of the timeline of actions within DG Place and Work Package 6, uh, as a reminder, Work Package 6 is uh, responsible for this strategy roadmap. Uh, we have started, uh, as exhibited, some, some brainstorming. Uh, the Work Package is now starting from the 1st of September. We expect all of you, of course, to be part and, and, and to provide and to challenge us and to provide us with your ideas, your views, uh, uh, your your criticism as well uh, on on some consil consolidated scenarios for the deployment of those platforms through online consultation, also of course through interactions with the community of of interest and with the advisory board and along those various deadlines that have been uh, that we have inserted on this slide just to, just to give you a, a, a snapshot of, of what is the ongoing work in this uh, strategy road so i will probably uh finish here my presentation i don't know if there are uh, uh if there are uh, any any questions right now or maybe if we keep that at, at the end for the question and answer session thank you very much jan thank you alan that was a really good overview of the of the roadmap and uh, we have some questions indeed but uh let's keep them to the uh question and answer section i would first like to see if uh, luigi uh, is online with us uh, so he can talk a little bit about the community involvement and how everybody watching this broadcast or recording later on can be a part of DigiPlace project. So, Luigi, are you there? Yes, here I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and see you loud and clear. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm sorry I cannot be there with you today. <clears throat> I was really uh, looking forward to this because uh, events um, are very important not only to inform about uh, the state of the affairs of the project and how the work is uh, uh, going on, but also as an opportunity to, uh, to meet um, uh, potential stakeholders that could be part of the work of our project in the months to come and perhaps in the years to come, because as you have seen from the presentation of Alain, the, 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 the strategic uh, uh, view of the future digitization of the construction is, is quite important. And, uh, and uh, our idea is this community should uh, not only be part of this project, but also be involved in future activities that will be launched by 
the Commission, hopefully, in Horizon uh, uh, Europe as Digital Europe. Uh, as you have seen, the, the sector is, uh, as you know, the sector is huge and, and, very, and very complex. And uh, this is one of the challenges of this project. Uh, and that's why uh, the community for us is particularly important is because we need to make sure that all the uh, different part, the different stakeholders are involved and uh, that we can take in consideration their needs, uh, expectations and problems that could arise through the um, development of, uh, of uh, a digital strategy for construction, in particular with platforms. Uh, as you see, this is, uh, I, I'm coordinating as for the Costruzioni this uh, work package two, that is uh, the one in charge of the long-term community building. Um, uh, also, <coughs> that includes the community of stakeholders and also the advisory board, and that is, uh, um, it's EXA that is, uh, it's FIEC that is uh, um, coordinating the, the advisory board activities. So it's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite complex. Uh, our objectives, as you, can, as you can see, is to, first of all, to inform uh, you about the, the project ob objectives and uh, now the, not the very preliminary outcomes, but also the outcomes of the project. As you've seen, a lot of work has been done um, and so the first thing is that you need to know what this all is about. Um, and then clearly there is an important role that the stakeholder uh, can have uh, is participating to the activities. And as been said also by Alain and other speakers before, there will be, there are ongoing activities that will uh, involve whoever will be registered as a, uh, as a stakeholder in our uh, community of stakeholders, uh, but also there will be a role in uh, disseminating the results of the project, uh, the reference architecture, the, the use of the reference architecture will be very important to make successful uh, the digitization of uh, the construction uh, sector in Europe and also at member states level. Uh, so the community could really help us into um, promoting the, the results, the activities, the reference architecture in, in, in the years to come. Also, as I said before, in my opinion, uh, participating also and be involved into the different um, new projects and activities that will follow. Um, as you've seen, the, the CSA, that is DigiPlace, is a, a small piece. I always say is the foot into the door for the uh, activities that the Commission and the strategy that the Commission is uh, carrying on on, on, on on industrial platforms. And construction, luckily, is, is, is there, but it will be even more there in the years to come if what we are proposing and the quality of work we will do with this first CSA will be uh, appreciated by the Commission, as we hope. And so there will be many more opportunities and funding that will be then uh, available for to develop uh, the activities that will start now with this uh, uh, DigiPace uh, project. Uh, and the other thing is clearly um, the influence, uh, because as you know, uh, I mean, Construction is very important, is large, uh, it represents uh, uh, high percentages of GDPs in many, in many countries, but it's not alone. Eh? There is a, somehow a competition between the different sectors uh, to have the full attention of the European and national and perhaps regional authorities uh, so that the sectors is kept at, as a priority sector. Uh, in the, in the activities and the funding also uh, that will be necessary to support uh, the digitization of this. And as you know, uh, it is made uh, not only by large and uh, important companies, but a huge number of, of small and micro enterprises. And the fact that uh, the, the sector will be taken as a priority sector would help also uh, to have industrial policies to support 
the digitization of the of the sector perhaps uh, um, activities like the development of digital hubs at uh, national and european levels also funding that could be given to companies to uh, invest into digitization etc so this uh, uh, role of influencing i think is 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 very is very important to uh, <clears throat> to uh, to assure that the sector is uh, properly uh, uh, supported and has the right attention. Uh, I want also to mention that, uh, as you know, there is a huge work that has been uh, carried on in every member state about the recovery fund. Uh, you know, is uh, is is a, is a very big fund that will be given to countries to uh, push the growth uh, of their uh, economies after the. The, the effect of the negative effect of the COVID crisis. And so also, I think that construction projects should be at the core of these priorities at member states level and European level, I think that is important. So our community of stakeholders can also help us in uh, uh, keeping the, the, uh, the central attention on construction on this. Let's go to the uh, following uh, slide. Um, Clearly, uh, the, the complexity of, of the sector, uh, as far as the community of stakeholders, needed also to be uh, structured in a certain way. And so that's why uh, we have identified these uh, uh, clusters. Uh, so the, 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 the whole community is divided in, in categories that are the same categories that you are finding when you register to the community of stakeholders uh, so that you can uh, define in which which group you uh, belong to. Uh, one thing I'd like to uh, point out in here is that it is particularly important for the construction sector is the public clients dimension that we have included because the in our sector uh, the public market is huge um, and also is a sector that uh, has a lot of uh, the impact of regulations is, is quite high. And so I think that is very important. And that is why also in the consortium, we have uh, <clears throat> uh, we have three uh, member states ministries uh, taking part in a consortium that are from Italy, France, and Germany, is because this, this uh, uh, public uh, dimension is, is very important. That's why it is uh, included into the uh, community of, uh, of uh, stakeholders. So when you register, uh, and I don't say if, but I say when, because I like to uh, see also from the, this uh, meeting of today, uh, a good result that we had in Bologna at a startup meeting with a lot of registration and community. When you register, uh, look at this list carefully so that you can put yourself in the right, in the right category. Let's go to next, please. Next slide. Okay, as you see, um, we need we need uh, a more a balanced presence, also countrywide, uh, to the community. Uh, I think that we are above uh, 300 already registered, but uh, we need uh, many more. And uh, as you see, I was talking about the conferences. Unfortunately, the COVID pandemic hasn't helped us in this because we we had planned. Uh, uh, many, many public events. And so uh, Ricardo Viaggi was a bit frustrated in this because uh, we, we have organized and then we had to cancel them one after the other. But so we, we really have to count on now on these uh, online and, and physical events to, uh, to, to increase the number of uh, registration to the community. And uh, we would like to see uh, a good a good country representation also because clearly every country has its own particularities and differences and we wouldn't like to uh, so we would like many more um, members coming from from other from other from other countries be, be, besides uh, besides Italy uh, next please so this is uh, as I say the the, the, our on the internet site of DigiPlace, you can uh, uh, you can uh, find a direct uh, link to the to the community and how to subscribe. 
you can also i think is next slide uh, you can also um, take a picture of uh, the qr code and, and you go straight into into the registration uh, platform <clears throat> that is very very easy so as uh, when i was uh, living in the states there were all these evangelists that were asking to pledge so i'm asking you to do it now to pledge now your interest into digiplace i think that the presentation of my colleagues uh, that were they spoke before me were very very interesting and they were giving you an idea on how this first foot into the door is really important for the future of the construction sector in in, in europe uh, if you go into and this, then you will see that uh, you have uh, to provide your uh, name, your uh, email address, eventually your phone if you want, the country, uh, which organization you are part to, uh, uh, so that uh, we can contact you. And then I think the very important thing, and I finish with this, is on the privacy side, you have to select there are three levels of engagement. Uh, so the basic one is that you accept that we sent you a newsletter, a info about the project. The second level is that uh, you uh, accept to be invited to events like the events of today um, and uh, or inform about initiatives. And the third level is the one where we will be really talking to you quite often is to be willing to accept, the, to be sent questionnaires or invited to interviews or video interviews about your uh, view on the different um, activities uh, of the project. Now, as the project is entering the last phase of its activities, I think that uh, it is, uh, <coughs> there are many, many opportunities for you to be uh, an active part of this uh, community, as you have seen, where package 5.1 is will, is defining the platform specification and there will be a consultation at the end of this month. So if you register now, you will be involved into this. And then there is the whole work of the strategic roadmap that is really, really important, not only to design, to participate, to what are, will be these priorities, but also to know that there will be opportunities that will eventually can involve you directly in the, in the years to come if you work well with the Horizon Europe and the Digital Europe programs. Thank you very much, and I'm at your disposal for any questions you may have. Thank you, Luigi. And uh, I would just like to reiterate uh, what Luigi, Luigi just said that uh, take part and join the community. And uh, even though this is a, especially a call out to um, uh, the Estonian viewers, um, Finnish Nordic viewers the, from the Baltics, to, to really uh, get involved in this project. Because uh, it might seem, you know, uh, it's, it's from something far away, but it's not really. It's, uh, it's a really great group of people uh, who have a very ambitious uh, goal and objective. And I think it's worth investing a little bit of time in it. Because uh, whether we like it or not, this project is going to influence probably uh, the way uh, Europe is going to go forward with, uh, with digital construction. Uh, it is something that the European Commission is very uh, uh, closely looking at and waiting for the results, the recommendations of this project, what will then come next. So uh, be involved and have your say and, uh, you know, be part of the team uh, and, and don't just look on the sidelines at what's going on and then later say, oh, well, they did something that, well, that's not right and we shouldn't do that. But you should do it now because all of this feedback is extremely valuable and, uh, and uh, very welcome. Yeah. So um, now on to the most interesting part, uh, I think, for, of the presentation uh, or this day is the Q and A session. So we have um, so we have twenty minutes ab about maybe half an hour left uh, to go through the questions. Uh, 
you are eager to ask everybody and uh, a lot of people have already uh, entered questions on Slido so if we can bring up the Slido uh, slide uh, once more just go to the website slido.com and look for the hashtag digiplace and you'll be able to enter your questions um, live uh, to to our panelists and uh, let's see who is online we should have online most of the speakers uh, from here today and it's gonna go like this that I will um, I will moderate uh, the question and answer sessions I will try to direct questions uh, to the panelists some questions here are already directed to a specific person but uh, I think we'll try and do as much of a discussion panel as is possible uh, using this digital format. So, um, but can we bring up the uh, the uh, screen with the participants? Uh, would be nice to see the faces. All right. So we have uh, already their uh, familiar faces, and also one more person who didn't get to present. Um, maybe uh, she can introduce herself. And there's Mimo as well, of course. But uh, I think, uh, uh, can you just say hi um, from, uh, I think also from uh, France? Hi. Sarah? Yes, I'm Sarah Mongotti from the French Ministry. Uh, Alain told uh, already that uh, we are part of the Work Package 6 uh, in the DigiPlus project. Okay. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you well, Sarah. Thank you for joining us. And uh, also, uh, as a new person, Mimu, can you just say hi so we can hear you online? Hi, 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 everyone, and thank you for this uh, presentation. It has been really wonderful to hear all the presentations. Okay, great. So let's go through the questions. Um, uh, can we bring up the Slido questions uh, screen? So I will just uh, highlight, perfect. So um, I've highlighted the question to Alberto. Um, the question is very simple. Can you share the mind map which you were presenting? So I'm guessing the answer is yes. Uh, yes, probably only after the send the delivery to the European Commission. So maybe uh, we have to wait only one month, not more. And after I think we could share. Nothing problem. Maybe we could put on uh, the website of the project. Mm -hmm. I is it okay to share the slides uh, from the today's presentation as well? Yes, like like today's presentation. Yes, why not? Okay, we will put the slides up on the website as well, and uh, and send an email out to uh, to all the participants. So, um, next question uh, is uh, directed at Jan. Um, so, the question is, can you specify the role and the objectives of the Construction Classification International and how does this fit with the EU BIM task group? So, this is a question for Ricardo. Thank you. A very good question. Um, the role of uh, CCI, uh, Construction Classification International, is to really... Um, uh, better enhance uh, international collaboration uh, especially when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, the common language for construction now classification is just uh, one part that we can uh, that we can uh, uh, look at so it's not the whole picture so if we're talking about data in the construction industry classification is kind of giving the frame so we're looking at the same location, uh, same high-level objects. But when it comes down to the properties and the very uh, details regarding materials and all of that, then we are talking also about data templates, and uh, which is maybe not specifically part of the classification. But to tie all the information together, <coughs> we need a classification uh, that describes the whole system, the whole complex. And this is what we try to do with CCI. And it's an open collaboration. Uh, everybody's welcome to join. Um, and we want to make sure 
it is always free to use it. And uh, as I said, we're, we started with a few countries already. And once we get the, the non-profit entity established in, in Brussels, we will, uh, we will be more actively communicating this because it's rather still in the beginning, uh, but we are implementing it on a government level in Estonia, in, in Czechia, in uh, Lithuania, and in Denmark already. And uh, there another part of the question was how does it link back to the EU BIM task group? Um, the EU BIM task group, for those of you who don't know, is a group of great people uh, who come together occasionally and think how to uh, utilize um, BIM and digital construction throughout Europe. Um, and uh, I'm proud to say I'm, I'm a member of the UBIM task group as well. Uh, the role of the UBIM task group is, in my view, on a higher level, looking at more topics uh, than just BIM, but throughout the entire building life cycle, you know, digital twins, uh, many of the topics that are already covered here with, the, with DigiPlace as well. And a lot of people involved in DigiPlace are also involved with the UBIM task group. But the UBIM task group has been uh, actively promoting uh, the use of BIM for years already. And it's kind of an advisor also to the European Commission. And one of those activities is uh, the EUBIM task group does is supports open standards and the use of uh, you know common uh, standards and classification is one part of that and uh, but it's not actively kind of directing all of these activities it's kind of connecting the people and the organizations uh, with the appropriate uh, activities but uh, yeah, if you want to know more about EU BIM task group, uh, go to eubim.eu. So that's their website. Uh, but let's take another question. Um, there's a question again about classification. Uh, why do we need classifications? Uh, there's a risk to other uh, that other countries stick to omniclass or other uh, types of classifications. That's true. There's lots of classifications, and that's the problem we face because uh, and, and that's what we're trying to solve with CCI because uh, we see that Estonia needed a new classification system and we shouldn't invent a new one we shouldn't start with our you know another classification system so we we, we went out and look for anything that we could use and uh, that's how CCI became about and we hope that more and more organizations adopt this after all it's based on standards and, uh, you know, it's, it's a very philosophical question why we need a classification. Um, whether we acknowledge it or not, we classify almost everything in life. Uh, starting from, you know, a uh, hierarchy of, uh, of animals, uh, plants, uh, and ending up with, of course, the built environment, uh, what makes up a building. And it's important that we are able to communicate and speak the same language. Uh, and that's why we still need, uh, for the foreseeable future, common classifications. Um, in the long-term future, of course, uh, machines will be intelligent enough that we can call, say, something about a column or a window in whatever language, in whatever classification, and the machine can interpret that for others. Uh, but that's a little bit further in the future. Uh, in the meantime, we still need a kind of a common language and a classification is, is, in my view, something that we, that we really need. But, um, okay, now going mo into more detailed questions about, uh, about DigiPlace. And for example, there's a question here about digital procurement and the alliance procurement model, which is differing from uh, traditional procurement models. And these uh, alliance procurement or IPD integrated project delivery models are widely utilized in Finland already. Mm, maybe um, Alan, can you maybe comment on uh, on how the DigiPlace project has an influence on procurement, and and is yes. there room for al alliance uh, kind of models? C can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, great. 
Uh, well, I'm probably not the only one being able to answer to this question, and I'm not sure about a comprehensive answer, but um, anyway, uh, I do believe that uh, as far as DigiPlace, I mean the DigiPlace project itself is concerned, uh, this is not, from my point of view, our main role of telling people we should use uh, the classical uh, procurement models, or we should use uh, the new Alliance uh, procurement models. Uh, what is important for DigiPlace, from my point of view, is two things. The first one is that, and that's also why the community is so important, because there are many, many initiatives, many developments here and there, and it's very important that the most we have people in the community of interest, the more we will get information on that. But I do believe that DigiPlace first have to analyze the fact that today there are development serious procurement models. Maybe in, 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 a near, in a near past there was only the classical ones, but now new ones, and in particular through the Allen's procurement models. So we have to analyze this. And doing that, what does that mean? This means that we have to elaborate a reference framework that will allow, indeed, construction stakeholders in the future to, in some way, how to tell this, smoothly deal with any type of procurement. Should they be classical procurement models? Should they be coming from, from these aliens? Should they be maybe in the future, I don't know, new form of procurement model that could be developed uh, in member states? But the most important is that we analyze that uh, uh, those uh, different models exist and that any type of RAF compliant platforms will be able to deal with that. Uh, and that would lead, of course, that could lead, by the way, to different scenarios for implementing digital platforms, though they could be compatible. Just giving a very, very quick example, and I, I, I'll be very, very short. Uh, think about uh, the, the, the railways network. In France, for instance, we have what we call the classical railways network, where you have classical trains, uh, also, of course, the high-speed trains uh, railway networks. But of course, high-speed train uh, networks can, of course, run uh, on, 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 on the classical uh, railway networks. So, and, and the reverse is true as well. So what is important is that uh, we have to ensure that in the future, in all cases, there will be different situations depending on the types of project, depending maybe on the types of regulations, on the various local, regional, or national boundaries. And we should ensure that digital platform in the future can really handle all those different models and, and being able to really manage uh, all those various boundaries. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Thank you, Alan. Uh, does anybody else want to um, comment on the alliance model? Maybe Mimo, since Finland was mentioned. Uh, do you want to comment on the alliance model and, you know, link to digital platforms? Uh, yes, I mean, alliance model, of course, I mean, it's, it's also like uh, about the kind of like how we're exchanging the information and really really working towards the same goal so in that sense that's really linked to the to the platforms and the, the data and and real data and the data which is up, updated so i see that kind of like the platform is really useful tool uh, for alliances to even even perform better so i think i think there is a great synergies in in that sense thank you mimo um let's take the next question uh it's directed to, to me and Alan, but I would really love if Alan would answer this first. Is it productive that individual countries go ahead with their own money and don't wait for funding? So I'm not sure exactly what they mean with this question, but how do you, uh, uh, how would you answer this, Alan? Uh, okay, maybe j just my interpretation of the question first. 
mean that, well, is there an irrational that uh, there are developments at a national level, uh, whilst it would be better maybe to have only development at European level? Maybe it's kind of an intuition on my side. Uh, but anyway, what I do believe is that, uh, yes, both are useful. Uh, I would say that national development are useful because this will be the only way to get or to dive into the details of the requirements and wishes from construction stakeholders in various countries in Europe and also to better identify what are the different constraints, boundaries in each, in each country? So that's something which is very, very important. And it's also important, of course, that there are, from my point of view, preliminary experimentations in various countries. So there has been presentation of the Platform of Trust in Finland about all those developments, very, very impressive in Estonia. There is some platforms as well. For instance, there is the Kraki platform. Uh, in France, there are other, other platforms as well in Belgium, in Netherlands. So that's something which is very, very important and, and which, uh, which allows us to leverage, by the way, on the expertise uh, and, 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 and the experience gained from those developments. On the other hand, there is as well a need to better work at a European level. Because at a given point in time, I would say that we would all dream, or at least I'm dreaming about kind of a single construction digital market. A uh, single construction digital market, by the way, doesn't mean only one digital platform. And it doesn't mean only public platforms, not at all. We are keeping, of course, our model of, of uh, private and public platforms and, and with a fair competition, of course. But we would dream about being able that, uh, being in a situation where, that where every SMEs, for instance, could deliver some kind of digital service that can uh, deliver this through any kind of, of platform throughout Europe. Uh, about funding from the European Commission, this funding, of course, will not come from the digital project itself. It's also not uh, uh, the fact that after digital, there will be only one project developing uh, digital platforms at European level. There will be calls launched by the European Commission. There will be two, three, four winners, I don't know, uh, that will necessarily, of course, involve various partners in different countries and potentially demonstrating interoperability of various platforms. But there should be also ongoing development on the public side and on the private side. And I would say that probably, of course, on the public side, uh, there is rational that uh, uh, there is, uh, I would say, uh, yes, this, this national funding as well. But of course, with the intention, as far as possible, to rationalize uh, uh, the national funding on one side and the European funding on the other. And these, of course, are still to be discussed, I would say, between uh, the European Commission, between the various member states, in particular those directly involved in DG Place, but I would say all member states, and also, of course, the construction stakeholders and, and the industry. Over. Thank you, Alan. Um, Professor Turk, how would you um, comment uh, the same question, really? Uh, local initiatives versus, uh, versus European-wide initiatives. Are, are there similar initiatives in Slovenia? Uh, Slovenia has quite an active uh, BIM scene, no question about it. Um, a lot is going on, also a couple of developers who are uh, active in the ecosystems of AutoCAD or Nemecek uh, and so forth. On the governmental level, things are not as expeditive as they could be. There have been some um, proposals, uh, you know, to create a Slovenian BIM strategy from the government down, but uh, it did not happen. However, um, I think the investors are fairly um, motivated, you know, to ask uh, uh, to ask for BIM. Uh, public procurement is asking for BIM on all major projects, so I would say it's happening uh, bottom-up. And by bottom, I mean also the owners, I mean also the investors. 
As to the development of the platforms, etc., I think uh, it is important that DigiPlace, many other projects, also research and development that has been going on for quite some time, gives uh, a signal, um, gives um, a signal that there is an opportunity, that there is a possibility that this could be a really good strategic formula. And then it really depends. Um, I am sure that many commercial actors will recognize the opportunity and start working uh, in the platform way. So I do not necessarily believe that this has to be a government initiative or that the governments or the European Union or someone like that is supposed to deliver the platform or the platforms. Um, on the contrary, it would be very nice to see um, software developers picking up on the uh, on the concept and um, you know in in a fair competition. And this is something that politicians and European Commission, European Commission have to do. And in fair competition with the Americans, um, deliver deliver a solution that is better than what um, is currently uh, is currently on offer so it's there's a room for for both parties uh, and i think with digiplace we are doing uh, our part the public organizations the publicly funded university the publicly funded project from the eu uh, it's it's setting up some uh, some groundwork disseminating knowledge um, also we are you know teaching uh, and lecturing about this um, an opportunity is there, who will take it is, is open. There's a couple of questions also which are similarly topiced uh, and related to, you know, Estonian initiatives. And uh, I would say that the DigiPlace project comes at a very good point in time because there are several initiatives uh, in, in member states uh, like Platform of Trust, uh, like uh, Crocky platform, for example, in France, and in several other places uh, in Estonia as well, uh, which are kind of moving towards platform economy, uh, the, the, the mind shift towards, you know, how to exchange digital data uh, in an automated way. And uh, being involved with DigiPlace uh, for us is extremely important because we are already developing uh, the solutions uh, and we want to be compatible with whatever you know, higher level or, or European architecture there's going to be. And it's really important that we all look towards, you know, the same goal uh, of how do we exchange information, not only within, uh, between companies uh, and uh, organizations within our country, but it is, the digital world is a global world. There are no borders. So we really need to think about how we, uh, bridge the gaps and eliminate all obstacles between data exchange of uh, of services in one country and another country uh, of one type and another type and I think that's the that's the value of digiplace and 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 what we hope to get out of it is that we adjust our platform to be compatible with it uh, we share our knowledge uh, of the development of the Estonian e construction platform. Uh, you know, the mistakes and lessons we've learned that could potentially help others. And we are looking for the same information from, from, from you know, Finland from, and other countries as well to see where they've stumbled and what could be the better approach. But in the end, it's all about uh, interoperability, interoperability, really, uh, between services. And, and that's what, uh, why I think DigiPlace project is, is really important. But Another question um, regarding uh, standardization. Uh, is there cooperation with SEN and ISO? Um, so maybe um, Luigi, as you were uh, uh, explaining us uh, the, uh, how the community of stakeholders is involved, uh, I think SEN and ISO are also stakeholders or are they of a different type? Um. Really, um, as you have you see, the, yes, I mean, organizations can be part, associations can be part, but really, um, the, the, the community is is uh, 
is more focusing on, um, as you see from uh, from the list, from a slide of the list for uh, uh, for for users uh, or uh, I mean subjects that are active in 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 the market now uh, ISO and, uh, and ISO and SEN. Yes, they are they are part, uh, and there is a, an active cooperation and discussion with them basically uh, mostly at the European uh, Association and Federation level uh, but um, I, I don't I don't think we have any of the of those that are part of our advisory board either um, but our organization have contacts with them and we we know what they do so uh, we if we need to involve them we will involve them uh, so there are there are Let's say channels open uh, now besides the community of, of stakeholders. Community wants to really bring in uh, um, subjects, people, organizations uh, that um, are, are somehow part of this very wide ecosystem, but that feel the need or the desire to uh, to provide uh, their their point of view or to be informed about these uh, developments because as you said did you place somehow and if we work well we'll have an impact on the future of uh, construction digitization so um, the, the community is really uh, to give space to to uh, individuals or organizations companies that are not already this part of the let's say the, the organizations that are normally participate at the point of view to the commission or to the uh, of the european and international activities of the sector i don't know if uh, i've answered to your question uh thank you luigi i think it it, it did answer does anybody else want to uh, comment on on ten iso in in my view it's it's more like uh, you know digiplace is building on top of the standardization work and uh, and of course we are uh, we have to f follow standards and we have to try and especially uh, regarding open standards but uh, is there any uh, more direct involvement with the ten and iso yeah go ahead uh, nicola oh sorry Alberto. Alberto yeah. Alberto, yes. Yeah. Fishery of, uh, of uh, this place and uh, the Italian standard representing STEM in the advisory board. So we had a strict connect, connection with uh, uh, ISO, with the SEN, uh, with uh, Italian standard. Is a part of the advisory board, but it represents Sam. Uh, there's a, another comment regarding the um, uh, regarding the mind map. Actually, that they recommend really opening up more of this information to uh, uh, to the stakeholders to get their engagement. But I think you know events like this, uh, there will be more and more events like this, and uh, you know. It's uh, it's better to engage when you really have something to show, and and that's why I think now during autumn, and and the winter, it's it's really the best time to join the community of stakeholders and get engaged, um, because there's a lot to discuss and uh, and to disseminate. Um, but uh, we have one more question about CCI, so I, I understand this topic is um, is interesting for people. Uh, we don't have an official website out yet uh, there's references um, to cci on the czech standardization uh, website and also on uh, molio website in denmark so if you're keen about learning more about cci um, first place you can take a look at is uh, molio.dk which is the danish uh, organization who is involved with the with the development of cci it's actually based on the danish uh, ccs system so it's kind of the next evolution of CCS. So there are the roots, but we will set up an international website uh, soon, and we will, uh, you know, send out information to to all.
participants involved. But uh, from looking at Slido, um, we are out of questions for now. If there's anything from the audience here uh, at Swiss Hotel. Um, typical Estonians, uh, no questions. <laughs> but, um, but we are uh, almost at the end of our uh, time anyway. And uh, I would like to thank all the panelists for being available here. And uh, for the closing remarks, um, I would kindly ask Mimo to, to say a few words as well. And then we can wrap up the show. OK, thank, thank you, Jan. And, and thank you for this, uh, this wonderful workshop uh, for DigiPlace. I mean, I think this has been really really showing us the possibilities, but, but also the, the ones where we need to develop. Uh, we started today with the productivity curves and we showed that there is a lot of things to do for us in the Europe. But the good news is that the whole world uh, has the same problems in the, in the construction sector. So this is why actually the digital transformation is, is so important for us because that's on, on the European level also very important as, as a competitive edge uh, for our construction sector. Um, we showed really nicely the, the timeline and uh, the expectation of the DigiPlace, so, so the whole project. And we also learned a lot about the different perspectives from Estonia and Finland, especially about the platforms, about their specification, how they are used, what are the kind of like what we need to develop more, what is functioning already now, what are the interfaces, how we make best use of the, the platforms. Um, also, we heard really interestingly about the reference architecture and, and the possibilities were really nicely highlighted that, that this is really the place for businesses, for the markets, for the good collaboration, for better quality in the construction sector. Um, in, after the lunch break, Alan was showing really nicely the big picture about DigiPlace, so the strategic roadmap, why we are doing this, what is our aim really in the, in the long-term perspective as well. And, and from Italy, we heard really nicely highlighting the importance of involving all the stakeholders. We know that the construction sector, especially, we have big players, but we also have many small players. So we really, really need to think about that how we are doing the, the future platforms, the future collaboration in a way that all can participate and, and all can be involved. Uh, the, the answers and questions session was also like really, really nice. It was really nice he to hear the reflections and, and the brainstorming what we need to do in the next step. So, so I really want to thank all of you, uh, especially I want to thank the DigiPlace about organizing this really, really nice, nice workshop and uh, it was really good to do this in cooperation with uh, Virtual Digital Built Environment virtual conference 2020. So I hope that we can see in a few weeks in virtual Tallinn and in virtual Helsinki in VDDB 2020. So thank you from my behalf as well. Thank you, Mimo, for the excellent uh, wrap up uh, and summary. Uh, I really have don't have much to add to that. Uh, she already said everything. Uh, I would just like to thank uh, again Ave and the technical team for uh, for making sure that all of our presenters from across Europe uh, were able to connect and without uh, major glitches. I think that's always a, a great achievement uh, in, in today's world, especially when we have uh, a very complicated setup like this. Um, and take part in the DigiPlace uh, community of stakeholders. Uh, become a member uh, go to digiplaceproject.eu. Uh, That's the website where you can find out uh, ongoing information about the project. And, uh, and also, as Mimu said, uh, we also have a slide uh, just to visualize uh, the WDBE event. Uh, who we are doing this event in collaboration with them to spread the word. So we're helping them to spread the w uh, also to spread the word about the virtual uh, World Summit on the Digital Built Environment, uh, which is going to be an illusion city uh, of uh, Helsinki and Tallinn. Uh, first time in the world it's going to be, uh, you c you'll be able to participate in this uh, 
virtual conference through uh, the Unreal Gaming Engine. So it's going to be fantastic. Uh, we don't know 100% how it will succeed, but I think uh, either way, it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting. So um, WDBE.org is where you'll get more information and you'll be able to buy tickets. But uh, I think that's it from us today. Thank you for uh, participating, for watching online, and uh, stay tuned uh, for ongoing news about DigiPlace project and, uh, and get involved. Thank you, everybody. Okay. <laughs>